Call a regular meeting of the <clears throat> Pennington County Commission order. And uh, just uh, point out that in the back of the room, if you'd like to speak on any particular items, that there are speaker request forms. Also ask that you silence any uh, phones or uh, other items that you have. And we'll start with the uh, moment of silent reflection and the Pledge of Allegiance led by Commissioner Hadcock. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Review and approve agenda. So move. I got a motion to approve and Thank second by Commissioner Lassiter. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Consent agenda. Holly Hennings. Good morning, commissioners. For public notice, the Board of Commissioners uses a consent agenda to act on non-controversial and routine items. The consent agenda is acted upon by one motion and vote of the board. Items may be removed from the consent agenda and placed on the regular agenda at the request of a board member or a citizen. Today's consent agenda contains the following items. Approval of the minutes from the regular meeting of June 15th, 2021. Number six is to authorize the chair's signature to the order of organization and incorporation for the Hardesty Road District with the following legal description. Lot one through three inclusive, lot B of lot four, balance of lot four, lot five through eight, inclusive of Hardesty Acres located in Township 1S, range 5E, section 36, the Block Hills Meridian, Pennington County, South Dakota. Number seven is to acknowledge the resolution for a minor adjustment to a road district boundary of the Summer Creek Inn Road District and describe as lot eight and that half of platted private drive adjacent to said lot in the Custer Trail subdivision number one, Lock Hills Meridian, Pennington County. Number eight is to acknowledge the notice of intent to conduct a raffle for the Silver City Volunteer Fire Department. Number nine is to acknowledge the notice of intent to conduct a raffle for the Ellsworth Air Force Base Maintenance Group without weapons, it's just another airline. <laughs> Number 10 is to acknowledge a disinternment permit, number 1406458. Number 11 is approval of the adopt a highway application for a portion of Deerfield Road by Cato Thorstison LLP. Number 12 is to declare agile mesh camera system equipment as surplus property for the purpose of donation. Um, and I apologize, I don't have the asset numbers to read in front of me, but those need to be included. Um, number 13 is to declare the firearms on the list presented as surplus property to be sold at auction as submitted by the Sheriff's Office. And finally, number 14 is to declare E-Studio 657 copier asset number 6351 as surplus property for the purpose of destruction or disposal. Are there any members of the public that would uh, choose to have any of these items removed from the consent calendar so they could be discussed? Are there any members of the commission that would like to have any items removed? Number eight, Mr. Chair. Number eight, Commissioner Rosconnect. Any others? If not, I would take a motion to approve 5, 6, 7, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So moved. Second. I've got a motion by Commissioner Rosconnect, a second by uh, Commissioner Lasseter to approve all items except for number eight. Uh, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Commissioner Ross Connect. We all know that uh, our volunteer fire departments are very critical to us, especially the of us that live in rural areas. So number eight is a uh, permit for a raffle, which will be held at Silver City on the 11th. It's a social, so I just want to re remind folks to get out there and support our local fire departments. Thank you, thank Commissioner Ross Connect, And thank you for being here today. So. Is there a motion? Move for approval. So I got a motion to approve number eight and a second. Uh, Commissioner LaCroix and Commissioner Laster. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? <coughs> Carried. Regular agenda items. I'm going to ask uh, Sandy Brackhouse to come forward, please. Uh, 
Sandy, it's uh, now the time for uh, the recommendation has been made that you be appointed to the Planning Commission. Uh, so I want to thank you, first of all, for applying for it. And if you just share with us a little bit about your background and why you'd like to serve on the Planning Commission, I'd appreciate it. Well, thank you. Thank you for um, selecting me. And I am anxious to serve. I have a servant's heart and uh, love our community, love South Dakota and the Black Hills. I'm very passionate about it. I was the general manager of the Rushmore Mall, and um, I am no longer there, but I had an extreme passion for that center and for the community that it brought. I have now dove into real estate, um, specializing in commercial and doing some home and land as well, but I, I love real estate. I love um, everything to do with, with the building, the zoning, planning, just making our community a better place and a better place for everyone that comes and visits and especially the people living here. I think we have so much potential um, and we're blessed to live in this grand land of great faces and great places and I'm excited to serve on the board. Super. Any questions the commission has of Sandy? The chair. Commissioner LaCroix. Well, I appreciate you applying and going through the process and so forth and I see that you, you kind of you reside in Hill City or Keystone area? Correct. Yes, between Mount Rushmore and the KOA campground. Great. I mean, we we need people from all over Pennington County, so it's good that we got someone from the hills, and you can help Ron out now. <laughs> good. Are you saying he needs a lot of help? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> He's not listening to me. So this would be for a uh, the remainder of a two year term uh, or a two years of a three-year term that uh, Catherine Johnson had to resign from. But uh, so we appreciate the opportunity to uh, meet you and uh, glad they came forward. Thank you. And I would take a motion. Move approval. Oh, I've got a motion from Commissioner Hancock, second from Commissioner LaCroix to approve Sandy Brockhouse to the Planning Commission for a term of two years. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carried. Thank you, Ms. Sandy. Thank you. Thank you, Sandy. Appreciate You're welcome. It. Appreciate it. Thank you. Item 16, um, 2020 Financial Compliance Audit. Legislative audit. Welcome. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> okay, well, Nora, we don't need to wake up with that shirt today. What's that? <laughs> oh. I said we don't need to wake up oh. with your shirt today. <laughs> That's a pretty cool shirt. I'm Al Schaefer with the Department of Legislative Audit. Uh, this is what we call our entrance conference, just to kind of let you know that we're here doing the audit. We're doing, um, Bruce Hintz will be helping me on with his audit again this year, and we're doing what we call a fiscal and compliance audit on calendar year 2020. Included in that is we have to do what we call a uniform guidance audit, which is required by because you guys get over 700 or spend over 750,000 in federal grants. We have to audit. We have to pick a sample of grants and audit compliance with the different requirements of the grants and stuff too. And with the COVID money this year, that's we know we're going to be auditing that one this year. So and that's going to be a big one. <laughs> so, but. Um, Part of your responsibilities as a commission is to let us know if you are, know of any suspected or known fraud. And I'm up in the auditor's office. If you guys know anything and you want to talk to me about it or anything, feel free to come up and, and this, I'm to come up and talk about anything. We're up there. We'll, you know, if you have any concerns or questions. But um, do you have any specific areas that you want us to review other than what we normally do in audit? I know we got a few new people on the board since the last audit and stuff. But, um, you know, an audit basically is we look at the sample of revenues and expenses. We reconcile cash. We look at the financial report to determine whether it's reported in accordance with generally accepted accounting principles. And and then we do our compliance, have some compliance testing with state laws and the federal laws and stuff too. So we, it, it, we do a lot of things by sampling and stuff. So we don't look at everything 100%. So we don't necessarily, you know, something could slip through that we don't find and stuff too, but we, we try our best to do what we can, so. Any questions? Uh, Mr. Chair. Yes. I haven't read the whole thing in detail, but I just see this one sentence and I just wondered if you could explain it. The county has chosen not to prepare or include management discussion and analysis part of the audit report. So basically what are they saying there? That is, that's, um, part of the, under general accepted accounting principles, there's a, and governmental accounting standards, there's a, a kind of a, it's a narrative explanation of some things in the financial report. And 
it's a hassle to go through and try to do it. And it doesn't, I mean, you know, it, yeah, it does maybe explain some of the stuff in the financial statements, but there's no county in the state of South Dakota that does it. And I don't think any, not very many cities do it either and stuff. So, so it's, that's one of those things that a lot of places just don't do. I mean, it would provide some additional information, but it takes a lot of work to do it too. So. Yeah, and, and that's what I thought. So yeah. anyway, yep. I just wanted the yep. clarification. Sure. So. Sure. Thank no you, sir. problem. Um, of course, we charge you for this, doing this audit, and our our fee, it's, it's established every July 1st, and it's based on a state statute that basically says we have, we have to charge what it costs for us to do the audits, and our fee last for this last fiscal year was seventy four fifty, so it's going to be probably, maybe it goes up maybe a buck or two usually every year, so we'll be recalculating it here pretty soon. And stuff so most of your audit will be billed on the new rate and stuff but and of course you're not billed for any time we spend on assistance what we give to Cindy or if we answering emails or talking or you know, doing other projects and stuff while we might be on site and of course Bruce will be driving down from Lee you don't get billed directly for that travel time either and stuff I live here in town so there's no travel for me and stuff so but other than that unless you guys have some questions like I said feel free if you have any concerns you want to come up and visit we're usually up there pretty much every day and stuff until we get done. I'm hoping, I mean, well, it'll probably be, for sure, the whole month of July we'll be up there and stuff. But after we're done with the audit, we'll meet with you guys again, at least with the chair, if we have no comments and stuff. But if we have any kind of written comments, we definitely will meet with the full board and stuff, but at the end of the audit. So, but that's all I've got other than have the chair and Cindy sign the engagement letter. Mr. Chair. Commissioner Roskinek. Move to authorize the chair's signature on the engagement letter from the South Dakota Department of Legislative Audit for the 2020 audit. I've got a motion. Is there a second? Second. <clears throat> a second from Commissioner LaCroix. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank, Thank you, you, Alan. Appreciate uh -huh. it. Thank we'll you. See Item 17, agreement for operation and use of fairgrounds property and buildings. Jay Alderman and Holly Hannes I have down here for this. Mr. Chair. Is the fair board or the fair people? Chair. Commissioner LaCroix. I just wanted to point out when I was reading through this, uh, financial support is spelled wrong. Let me find that. It's got an extra letter in there. That probably came from Jay. No, commissioners. <laughs> Jay, you don't know how to spell? Uh, let's see if I can find it. I had it when I was going through it. Actually, I was not involved with this one. Yeah. <laughs> it's under, under ownership, financial support. It's got financial S U O P P O R T. Okay, that we can fix before the chair signs it. No, this is just an update um, in going through their liquor licenses, going through our insurance. Uh, we just realized that it was time to update their lease agreement. And Tracy Decker from the state's attorney's office worked with uh, Mr. Jeffries on preparing this new lease agreement. And it's just time for the board to take a look at it. Hello, Chairman. Commissioner Edgar. Are you done, Lloyd? Sorry. Okay. So a couple of things. Do the people like the Western Junior Livestock, do they have insurance? I mean, do their leasey people have insurance? Yes. Okay. And um, maintenance, repair, and capital expenses under B, major repairs shall be coordinated through the Pennington County Buildings and Grounds Department. I understand that. But we ended up um, for their major repairs and those repairs significant, significant or total replacement of item as component. I can't even talk to you. item of component of buildings such as heating, cooling. Um, at this point, a lot of that, you guys, they're going to end up getting 500000 extra a year. I think. Um, Not extra. Have, Not extra, but it'll be a total of 500000 Well, so they've been getting about one hundred and eighty. Three, so they're going to get 300000 more. Yeah. So at this point, it seems like they should be able to um, do a capital improvement plan and some other things that they need for the fairgrounds, where at this point, I don't think they should be needing money from the county, meaning the lessor, as you say, on here, if you're increasing it to a point where they can budget for capital improvements. Does that make sense? 
Well, I, I would point out, though, that we have 38 buildings out there. Right. And several of those buildings are definitely in need of a lot of repair and maintenance. And right. so to say that they won't need any help from the county, I think, is, um, I, I don't think it's probably a, a factual. Well, why I'm saying that, they, Gary. They are doing a capital improvements plan. They're working on that currently. Well, what I'm saying is they're, if, if they're getting more money, plus um, at this point, um, their buildings, there's got to be a point where you're making enough money to take care of your properties, in a sense. Um, and to me, you're ending up giving them, or the county and the city people are giving them another 300000 that's a lot of money for us to go in later and say, okay, there's 38 buildings and we need to help improve these buildings, um, which has been their built. I mean, we own the buildings, we but do. they've had a chance in many things to do different stuff out there True. in order to make it what it should have been a long time ago. This is true. So, um, my bottom line is, is sorry, Ron, how much are you going to put in the fairgrounds and how much are we going to pay? We, we did some major expenses for them, I understand. But a lot of times um, when we had their meetings, um, they were going to raise 1.2. They were going to raise certain money and we ended up paying, you know, some of their stuff. So I don't know what needs to be different out there based on their financials or how they're doing their financials. Um, I love the fairgrounds. I love the board and stuff out there, but something needs to be different with budgeting, I believe, of how they're doing things or how they're running it, in a sense. Because it's been like that for a long time. I mean, a lot of those buildings, they have done some stuff, but a lot of that stuff has been like that for a long time. So, um, is it meant to make money? I don't know. Is it meant for ag and and people um, in the, in the um, ag community? It is. It's going to need to be subsidized, and I'm good with that because I I think ag is huge in this community. But I'll keep saying something needs to be different in how it's run with the budget. If they're getting three hundred thousand more, and you're running a place at five hundred thousand dollars a year that they're getting from us, there should be something should be starting to be in reserves or something for these major improvements or the things that they need for the future, which I truly believe, um, being on the board, they need to have um, a bigger building like they had their dream was 4.5 million. It's probably more now. I think that would be huge for them. But um, for somehow, there's a lot of talk and not a lot of action. And since you've been on there, Gary, thank you. It's been amazing. And, and this is, you know, on our budget, it's showing how they're moving forward. But um, just just something with the budgeting needs to be a little bit different on how they do their their stuff, I believe, if I'm willing to um, give my vote personally towards moving forward the fairgrounds. This is one of the things that needs to be changed. But again, on the major repairs and things like that, I don't know if that's going to be sustainable for other commissioners in the future if something doesn't change at the fairgrounds for their budgeting. I'll just tell you that. Um, because um, that's that's a lot of money for the, and I've been hearing it from the community to put in the fairgrounds. And then the other side is this is ag, this is amazing. They're finally doing something for the county to help them. So I'm hearing both sides, but mostly about the budgeting. Mr. Chairman, oh. Commissioner Ross, connect first. Oh, I was just going to point out the way I look at it, and I'm not that familiar with the fair board, how they generate money. I know it's almost the push. But I look at those buildings, not owned by the commission, owned by the citizens of the county. And we owe it to the, those citizens to maintain our buildings. We're going to own those buildings, and we need to maintain those buildings. All you have to do is drive through there and start taking a look at some of those battered buildings. And that's not pride of ownership. That's some, that's neglect that hasn't been upkept for maybe 10 or 15 years. And now we're just saying, it's time to fix it. Well, this is going to take a little bit of money, and I think this is where this program is going. I don't know that we have to keep it up year after year. I think once, once things are looking pretty good, we can back off. But I, I do agree that we need some uh, money put aside for some, uh, some major repairs so that when people come out and see our buildings, we can, uh, we can show them pride of ownership. 
Commissioner Lasker. Yes, uh, thank you, Chairman. I just want to point out that um, the fairgrounds is starting to do that on June 17th or 16th, one of those two days, I can't remember which one it was. I was there with them. We were working on a capital improvement plan. We were establishing what would be done with these funds uh, so that as we move forward, they can plan out with these funds, how they're gonna utilize them to fix some of these issues. Obviously, they have to utilize some of the funds for their standard maintenance and issues of that nature, but they're also, um, dedicating these funds and putting in a, actually they had about an eight year um, plan to build some funds and to work on some of the projects that they have going on. They do have a lot of issues out there that are that are big dollar projects that, that are going to probably need uh, county involvement with just because of the size of the projects. But this is kind of a, a step forward so that they can actually start building that capital reserve, if you will, so they can do some of the plans that they want. They they haven't been able to do that because they didn't have the revenue or the funds. This They've got a plan that is being built and I'm working on that with them. So I, I'm a firm believer of having a plan so that whenever you have projects that you want to do, you, you're saving money to build for those instead of asking somebody for those. So that's what I'm working with them on. So, and I think we're moving in the right direction with that particular plan for their facilities management. So I think ag and youth is probably the, the predominant thing that, that the Central States Fair is looking at. Uh, there's a lot of things they do for the youth uh, that are not revenue, not generating revenue. Uh, from that standpoint, there may be charges relative to it, but it's not covering uh, anything more than just the cost of operating. In all events that are held there, uh, those people holding those events, uh, they do provide their own insurance for their coverage. So that's something that's always required of, of every event that's that's there. Well, Chairman, sure. I have a, um, <clears throat> another item on item D on the 10% administration fee on the subleasing income. Can you explain that, Holly? It'd be under maintenance, repair, and capital expenses. My understanding, that's just the um, the administration fee that we pay them to run and manage the fairgrounds for us. What? Well, that's when we pay the fair, we have two separate line items that we pay them out of. One is the administrative, and one is the repairs and maintenance. So they get a set administrative. Um, fee for the year for to run and manage the fairgrounds for us, and then we pay uh, repairs and maintenance. I didn't know we paid an administration fee to run the fairgrounds. Mm -hmm. And how much is that usually? Mm, I apologize, I don't have the number off the top of my head. I know we give them about 183, 185 a year. I want to say it's either 70 or 80,000. The majority of it goes to the repairs and the maintenance. Mr. Yes, Chair, Commissioner Roskine. When I read this under maintenance, repair, and capital expen expenses, it say normal maintenance and repair of the buildings, grounds, and equipment to preserve the life and usefulness of the fairgrounds shall be the responsibility of the lessee, which would be the fair. Major repairs shall be coordinated to the Pending County Building and Grounds Department and shall require written approval, which would be the responsibility responsibility of the responsibility of the lessor the question is is you know you can where do those two cross each other where it's our responsibility their responsibility that's where i think we need to maybe refine those two paragraphs so that we have some threshold uh no it's your responsibility and it's not our that might help mr. going forward as well mr chair commissioner the i i just wanted to clarify on I think some of that gets clarified from communication between buildings and grounds and the fair boards of what kind of maintenance needs to be done and help for. Prime example is cracking some of the blocks on the Walter Taylor building. Buildings and grounds came out, fixed them, did an excellent job, made it look like there was nothing ever there before. Certain things we can, our, our maintenance can do that helps our buildings and that, that that's one prime example. I. I too look over the maintenance and stuff and, and concern, but I've also seen the fairgrounds come a long ways in the last 10, 15 years. You know, uh, the lighting they found, the parking, the buildings, could there be better? You bet. And I think that's what they're looking at with, with the capital improvement plan is trying to look at some of those bigger costs to do that. I think the partnership that we're kind of talking about through this lease, type thing is a, a pretty common one, but 
I know any major expenses would come to this board. And you know, Mr. Uh, Jeffries has worked with Mike Cool, and Mike Cool has reviewed this agreement as well. Yeah. And um, Mike is very clear that anything major needs to be run through him and through the building yeah. committee itself. Um, but the the minor repair, light switch, those kinds of things, obviously the fairgrounds just takes care of it yes. with their staff that they have. And and they and they utilize uh, work release people to help keep the place up, that all that type of stuff. I mean, it's a pretty well utilized program. And I know the maintenance is heavy up there. And when you start talking about a lot of painting and the equipment, and I think that's what they were talking about when they first come up with like the front end loader and some of these Bobcats. I mean, these are thirty-five, eighty thousand dollar <laughs> purchases that you you know, you you just can't I mean, you can keep spending ten thousand dollars on a repair, but you know when something's wore out. I think that's what they're kind of looking at. I do. I hear everything the commission's saying today, and I do have concern about maintenance. And I've always thought there should be a maintenance fee on ticket sales, and we go back and forth on those type of things. And when we come back up, I'll bring it up again. But I mean, uh, I think uh, <laughs> Mr. Drew said it. You know, these are our buildings for the county and we need to help maintain them one way or another. Mr. Chair. Commissioner Oscar. I think an example is just like stall barn number four. It's just uh, you know, is it is that a an example of where the county's gotta get in and take care of it, or is that an example where the fairgrounds can probably take care of it? it it's just a roof, but it's a big roof. We can certainly continue this if you have additional questions, concerns that you want us to address or look at and have Mr. Jeffries come um, to a future meeting. What would be the desire of the commission? I Personally, I don't think we need to. I think we have questions that we'll, I'll have at budget times and so forth, you know, or can pass on to my commissioners on the board or represented on the board. So is there a motion? I'd move for approval. I got a motion to approve and a second by Commissioner Roskin. Uh, further discussion? All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. Thank you all. Yeah. Items from the auditor, Cindy. Good morning, Commissioners. Cindy Moeller, Pennington County Auditor. Um, after our last budget discussions, I went back and added a few things that were uh, made some adjustments for, uh, I don't remember what all the different adjustments were. Fixed the insurance for um, fire fund. Um, there was a few other ones, and I do have that noted in your, uh, the information that you were given in your packet. And then I went through the three different versions um, of the base budget that we currently have, and then the revised base with the secondary operations, um, the secondary requests. And then um, the third version I added in the FTEs. So and I did put on this presented for approval, but um, it was pointed out that we can't do that until after the 15th. Right. So. Right. Per, per statute. So, does anybody have any questions on what was presented or? Questions. I only get a statement, and I appreciate the fact that you, well, in your opinion, if it's sustainable or not, because that helps me try to make a decision in the future. Yeah. So, Chairman, not really a question for Cindy, but thank you, Cindy, for all you do for us, because you already know we go through this, Texas, and plus with the money that we have from different agencies from COVID, um, that kind of does a little bit of, well, doesn't do a little bit, does a lot more extra work for you and your team. So we appreciate that. Um, Chairman, are we gonna have a work session on this? A further work session? Does anybody need one? I don't think one was planned. Yeah, I don't think one was planned. It wouldn't, I mean, I wouldn't be opposed to having another kind of final walkthrough of what we think we can do or what we would like to do, but I mean, I'm open to something of that nature. I kind of like some information. Are we 
getting the funds, the 11 million, did we have that stipulation, sir? Meaning, do they have the rules and regulations on it yet? Is some of this, I haven't heard, is some of this, like um, the radios, um, the 2 million for the Pennington County housing, is some of that going somewhere else so that um, frees up, meaning uh, we don't have to put that in motions or we have to put it in motions, but we know it's going to go somewhere else later. So we don't have to deal with it, trying to figure it out with our general fund budget and uh, whatever we have from the first COVID money. I mean, to me, it's all, I'm kind of confused about what can go where. Does that make sense? It does. And I don't think we've got complete clarification yet on the uh, American rescue plan, which is, the, the 11 million that we have that's uh, that's for this year's use so and I think we've kind of decided that we wouldn't move on that until we have complete clarification um, but it may there may be some things that we have here that could qualify for that well I um, think some of the emergency things like the radios and different things that people are needing communication things they it seems like they would be at least something with that 11 million that would make sense that when they approved the first covert stuff that went through pretty easy um that that would not sure qualify. That, i'm Does not that sure at this point i'm not sure those are what could be included in there okay so it's kind of confusing trying to do a budget that we want to make sure people you know especially the emergency services and stuff are taken care of but still be able to do some of the other things for people that um are um, crucial to running Pennington County is a good way to put it. So for me, it's hard for me to figure out where I'm deciding because I really don't know where that, do we have that money there or do we not have that money here? I know we're doing first time operations with the <coughs> first set. That's, that's a no brainer because it's going to increase the budget every year. We can't afford that. Um, I don't know. This, this year just got, a little bit more confusing with all the different pots and, and where we should actually be. My biggest concern is sustainability for the next year um, and keeping this budget where it needs to be without adding a bunch of, uh, we have like 16 FTEs that want to be added for next year. Um, we've been adding FTEs a lot every year, guys, probably about eight to 10 in the last couple of years. And I don't know if that's sustainable. Now, um, Paying people appropriately and making sure everybody's in the right line item um, and doing um, job descriptions and raising people where they should be. Um, totally in favor of that because um, some of that's just a key thing of it's going to go up and down. Um, but just that's why I said with the work se session and even if I talk with Sydney, Sydney's not going to know what this board wants. So it's kind of nice to have appropriately um to figure out where those pots of money should go and what this goal of this commission is before we all just start saying, you know, this is my favorite and this is his favorite kind of thing. The Mr. challenge Chair. is going to be is to try to find a date in which to do that because we need to adopt a provisional budget at our mm -hmm. next meeting. Yeah. So there isn't, is that the 20th, sir? 20th. Yeah. So we don't have a time in between there? Well, well part of the board is going to be gone. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Wait, Lord, I'm done. Sorry. Just just getting a little bit frustrated with some of this stuff on here. Commissioner with, LaCroix. That, with Cindy. But. Okay, going through this, Cindy, you got the revised base budget, which to me is balanced with the 23% reserve. That's the base. I think that's, you know, at our last meeting I said for provisional we could at some point uh, by the end of the month, is it that one good enough to where we could oh, absolutely. pass and then go yes. back and work on stuff? So we do have time. Right. I mean, absolutely. I think the provisional is a balanced. We could present it, we could get through it, and we can have our board discussions. What I'm looking at is what you did was is really good. You did the base budget with secondary operational costs. That's what that is, and we still have a 21.32% reserve, which is good. Board could still work some numbers if they wanted some FTEs added. I'm just saying. Then you get to the third presentation that you have, which is good. You had <coughs> everything, right? 
everybody operational employees everything and we come up with that below our reserves to 19.79 but then we got to we're going to be in the hole we're going to have to come up with that my question is is with the properties the way things are going our growth and i can get with you later i'd like to know what some of our growth projections are because maybe next year's the year to say flat maybe not i don't know what the board wants but i'm just saying you know some of our growth may be expert be able to cover that for the third part this year just saying but <clears throat> i like the way you presented this i mean it, you got the three tiers i think we can work through the and we got the six million one time <clears throat> I think that we got to sit back and go through one by one what we feel is important, how to well audit. But this, I like the way this come forward this time. Just my thoughts. I still think we, at some point, we could do, we could pass that provisional and then work on it. That's a, that's a true statement. Where you can yep. pass it and then just, then do like a work session where we're going. Yep. Okay. And I concur with that. Commissioner Lowe, okay. I like this. Layout. So I take a motion to move to continue the uh, 22 budget to the July 20th meeting. Second. Is that a motion, Ron? Yes, motion. Uh, I'll second was, it. If the motion wasn't made, then I will make that motion. Okay. I'll second. Thank you. And who second it? I'll second it. I didn't add motion. I was going to. And just one more second. question, <laughs> Chair. So that might help too. Maybe they'll have some of those stipulations. Maybe not on some Maybe. of that. So that way we can figure out on some of this that we actually want to do and not take it out of one-time costs either. Just be able to use it for the other million. Okay. Further discussion? All right. I might just point out that I think we've come a long ways from when we originally looked at it and kind of dialed it in. And I think one more little work session or one-on-one -on -one with Cindy will uh, certainly help me too. Further discussion? Thank you, girls. Thank you, Cindy. Thank you. All those in favor of the motion indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> motion carried. Thank you, Cindy. Okay. Item 19, equalization. Shannon. Good morning. Shannon Rittberger, Director of Equalization. I'm bringing two abatement requests to you. Uh, again, pretty simple. Uh, Boland uh, is a property owner that applied for owner-occupied on a condo in a garage and mistake in our office, we applied it to the garage and not the garage and the house. Uh, Alverson is a mobile home that is no longer there. Mr. Chair. Uh, Commissioner Roskin, you want us to prove those one on separately or together? I don't care. Well, I'm moved to approve the abatement application for parcel 62343 for Leo and Bernice Bolin in the amount of $1,273.22 for tax years 2019 and 2020. Got a motion. Is there a second? And a second from Commissioner LaCroix. Uh, further discussion? Any public comments on it? All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Next one is the Alverson one. Mr. Chair. Commissioner LaCroix. I'd move to approve the abatement application for parcel 82387 for Denise Alverson in the amount of $23.50 for tax year 2019 and 2020. Second. Got a motion and a second. Any uh, public comments? Seeing none, uh, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. Thank you. Item 20, request to establish the speed limit, Sunset Ranch Road District. James Russell, I understand he's not present. In so, Commissioner Laster, I understand you've been out there. What I've been out there. With this? Yes, sir. If you look at the pictures on, on the on the um, in the package there, the, the roads, pretty much, if I remember correct from the meeting, the on the last page, uh, it's that dirt road from where you see the dirt road and you see the house up on the hill on the left-hand side. It's basically turning that from a 50 to a 30. Um, um, it, that piece of the road came underneath the road district just recently, so they're just wanting it to stay the same speed limit within the road district, within their sunset road district, as far as I understand. So originally, I believe it was with the county, and as they extended it, if I understand it correctly, um, now they just want the, the speed limit to be the same. 
Does the county highway have any comments on it? <laughs> you go right out on you there, Sean. <laughs> Mr. Chair. So Travis that Commissioner McCoy. So Travis, that just it's just a continuation of on that gravel road for that for that road district. Okay. So Joe, we're talking about that the road district. Uh, yeah, Joe Miller, Pennington County Highway Department. Um, yeah, the Sunset Ranch Road District, the the speed limit discussion, the highway department did review that and it's just a continuation of their road district basically. Right now it is I would say, quote unquote, technically county road, but in the future when we get a re road resolution, the, it'll be road district because they own land on both sides of it. So it is therefore the road district's uh, jurisdiction. Cool. You You've been on it, Joe? Motion? Yes. Yep. 30 mile per hour, is that a reasonable? Yeah. Okay. Little approval. Uh, okay. We've got a motion by <laughs> I'll Commissioner second that Atkin. one. I was about to read it off for you, but there you go. Second by Commissioner Laster. Is that right? Yes, sir. Uh, all those in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Stay up here, Joe. Item 21. This is a request for a variance to Ordinance 14 and the approval of the second approach. All right. I'll get Sean Smith up here. He's uh, taking Mark's place in these uh, Ordinance 14 and the approach permit stuff, so I'll let him speak. Sean Smith, Pennington County Highway. So the uh, first one for Mr. Gregory Soto, um, we went and looked at that one. He is requesting this because uh, the north portion of his parcel is uh, does not have access because of the Hawthorne Ditch. Um, so a second approach would provide him that access. Uh, there were no site distance issues and no drainage issues. So uh, therefore we were not opposed to this request. No approval. Second. Got a motion and a second to approve by Commissioner Hadcock, second by Commissioner Osconnect. Uh, any public comment relative to this? Any commission comment? All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. I don't. Uh, go ahead, Sean. I didn't say that. the next item on 22 is a similar deal. Um, due to the shape of the parcel and the topography, um, the landowner was looking to uh, build a, a garage down below. There's a hill there um, where his current driveway access is, and there's no no physical way to get down there without going from the other, uh, uh, which road was that? Off of Robin's Roost. Um, so again, we went out and looked at it. It does meet site distance and there aren't any drainage concerns on our end. Um, so based on the topography and, and the uh, shape of the parcel, we weren't <coughs> in opposition to this one either. Move approval. Second. second. We got a motion by Commissioner Hadcock, second by Commissioner Laster to approve. Any public comment on this? Any commission comment? All those in favor of the motion indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Items 23. All right, Joe Miller with Pennington County Highway again. Uh, first up there in front of you is uh, work orders for some federal uh, bridge grants that we've got here this year. Uh, one on Thunderhead Falls and then the other one's on Ham Request. So uh, this would be two grants for Thunderhead Falls, one federal and then one big grant that we've been awarded so far. Um, with that, uh, so this this work order is for the hydraulic study um, and survey. Uh, the county's portion of this is sixteen thousand six hundred nineteen dollars and two cents. Um, just a little side note: the Hammerquist uh, bridge is actually the oldest bridge on Pennington County's system, uh, built in 1916. So 1916? It's 116. 16. It's 105 years old and still in use. So. Um, wow. They built them right back then. We asked, sure. can you get them engineers back? <laughs> <laughs> right? I'm not Sorry. sure if there were engineers Sorry, back Joe. in that Sorry, day. Joe. <laughs> so, Joe, when this bridge gets replaced, are we going to take a piece of it and, and uh, save it for preservation at a shop somewhere? I'm not sure because I believe, I'm not sure about, 
I, I need to look and see. I was trying to find it this morning, but I believe it's on a historic preservation deal. So we'll have to probably either build over the top of it or build next to it. I don't know that we'll be able to remove it. So I'm not sure exactly what's going to happen there. So it's nice that we got a bridge or a federal grant to replace this because I think it's going to be fairly expensive. Um, they, right now, the the estimate is seven hundred thirty four thousand bucks to replace it. So How much? Seven hundred thirty four thousand um, dollars. And then uh, Thunderhead Falls is uh, seven hundred ninety six thousand for a total cost of one point five million dollars. And then the Pennington County cost for that will be two hundred seventy six thousand one hundred sixty five dollars. Wow! So I'll move approval. Second. So I've got a motion by Commissioner Hadcock, second by Commissioner Lasseter to approve any public comment on this. So Joe, I don't think I've ever dealt with this before with where you have a bridge that's part of the National Register of Historic Places. I haven't either, so it'll be a learning curve. Wow. You can leave it up so you have two bridges. <laughs> <laughs> Make it a walking bridge or something. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure exactly what uh, what they'll do with it. I wonder if they'd let you do that, make it as more of a walking bridge, not a, and a bicycle yeah. bridge. The problem with where it's at is I don't know that it's uh, it's not conducive for that. <laughs> so I, I don't know what they'll yeah. – it'll be interesting to see how it evolves. They could use more access no matter what out there. All those in favor of the motion indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Next up uh, is Wilsey Road Reconstruction Agreement with Ferber Engineering to do the uh, the design. Um, Ferber's actually already completed the hydraulic study as well as to the uh, topic of uh, excuse me topographic surveys for the realignment that was required for FEMA um, to go through to to get the approval. Uh, we finally got the approval for this FEMA funding here. Oh, I don't probably a couple months ago here. Um, so this is just to get the engineering design so we can let a contract for this to be done next uh, next construction season. The deadline for the to get the project completed under FEMA is March of 2023. Um, so with that, I guess I'll stand for any questions. Move approval. Got a Sorry. motion by Commissioner Hadcock, second by Commissioner Lasseter. Uh, public comment relative to this item? Uh, commissioners comments, questions. All those in favor of the motion indicate by saying aye. 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 Motion approved. Thank you. Next one, I thought we were giving her, uh, we were demoting her, not giving her more money. <laughs> Morning, Sandy. Where's Sydney at? Morning, Commission. Sandy Sortland, HR Generalist. No, we have a motion to change the deputy auditor, chief deputy auditor, existing position from a C42 to a C43 due to an increase in responsibilities for the position. Chairman, I move approval and then uh, follow up. Second. Commissioner Hadcock uh, moved. Commissioner LaCroix made the second. Uh, follow up. Okay, Cindy, I was just giving you crap about demoting you, but. Um, Cindy does an awesome job. Um, this is long served. This isn't Cindy, who's chief deputy. Her assistant is Casey Iceland. Casey is the one with the glasses with short hair. Okay. Sorry, Cindy. I thought this was your. And actually, Casey um, is amazing. You never really see Casey, but Casey does a lot of work. Casey doesn't talk that much. <laughs> I mean, she does, but you don't really see her that much. Um, she's amazing, but. Both these positions, um, I know we had raised Cindy too as well, so I'm glad we did because there's a lot more work and a lot more responsibility um, in the county with the voting registrations and a lot of different stuff. And now we're going to have a grant writer up there that she's running and just Cindy to do a lot. And Casey is your assistant and does a lot to help. And you've been in that position, so you know um, how much work that takes. So thank you for taking care of your people. Any, any public comment? <clears throat> Relative to this. Commissioner LaCroix. I, I was, I'll just echo what uh, Ms. Hadcock said. It is, you know, Cindy, I, I'm glad you're sticking up for your employees and moving forward. You see how important this was and working with HR to get it to where it needs to be. And, it, and bringing it forward in this form, I think, is appropriate. And uh, I think your employees respect you for that. So, thank you. Thank you, HR, as well. All those in favor of the motion indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? 
Motion carried. Thank, Thank you, you, Sandy. So, Sandy, can you give us an update on John? I texted him this morning asking for an update, and I have not heard back yet. Okay. So. Very good. Thank you. Items from the public. Anybody here wishing to address the commission? I just want to bring this up, Miss Joyce, so the public, more of the public can see it. Silver City Social is pretty important. It's pretty awesome for what people do out there and the work they do. Mr. Drew moved up public comment to the middle of the deal so you didn't have to wait till the end. I see that. <laughs> maybe, maybe you bought some rhubarb pie with you. And Ms. Chagru, I, I thought you'd be the first one running up at public comment. <laughs> we just love to hear your voice. My name is Joyce Chagru, and I'm from the public. Uh, uh, our president of our board of directors of the Silver City Volunteer Fire Department is here with me today, uh, Brian Olson. He's new to our community, given some of us have been there quite a long time. And we certainly appreciate when we get new members uh, that they volunteer to be firefighters, especially. So Brian has been trained as wildland firefighter. Uh, he is now getting experience in wildland fire and emergency medical. So we do appreciate. Uh, so I'd like for all of you to meet Brian Olson. Nice to meet, nice you, to meet you, Brian. Really Thank you, Brian. Welcome. Hey, it's Brian. Well, I'll mention again, I make a good apple pie. Yes. <laughs> Where you, where'd you come from? She says you should, you're I new was, there. I was born and raised in Sioux Falls, but I lived here for 30 years. I was the VP of HR for Riddles Group for 30 years. I retired in December. Okay. So now I need things to do. <laughs> Thank you for volunteering for our fire department. We have a great group of people that do some amazing work, and you can be part of that. That's pretty awesome. I'm glad. I'm, it's really exciting. We, Silver City made a, a fine showing of themselves during that Schroeder fire. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, Welcome. Joyce, tell us about the social. Okay, the social. <laughs> I'm now secretary of the fire department, so that's why I'm here representing them today. Uh, I've had experience before as their treasurer, so uh, being secretary is new to me. Uh, the Silver City Social is our main funding event. As many of you know, we are not tax supported in that fire district, so we rely on a fee for landowners and donations. And the Silver City Social is our main fundraising event for the year. We did not have it last year because of the COVID restrictions. So it's scheduled for next Sunday, July 11th. We hope for good weather. Uh, we're having the Volks March in the morning. That group is doing that early. Then uh, the fire department, all hands on deck on Saturday and Sunday, will do lunch. Uh, we have music, uh, Larry Lashley and his group. We have a silent auction. I don't know how many different items we have, but Assistant Chief Jeff Chagru has been, and Kathy Druckery have been very active in getting donations from Hill City, Rapid City, Lee Deadwood, and individuals, <clears throat> and we really appreciate that. Uh, so uh, then we have a raffle this year, and you acknowledged our request for the raffle. Uh, the uh, Chainsaw Artist in Hill City has donated, uh, a, with some input from us, a four-foot welcome chainsaw bear. So we're going to start that raffle on social day next Sunday and continue it through our traditional firefighter booyah day, which is a special soup in the fall. Uh, and then we will uh, see who actually wins that four foot bear. I saw a picture of him yesterday. He's really cute. <laughs> so we invite all of you to come. I talked with all of you except Deb and maybe we'll have a chance later. Uh, Hopefully, some of you can make it uh, awesome. uh, next Sunday. So we're looking forward to it. So Brian says he makes a mean apple pie. Okay. So do I have to get there at any particular time to make sure I get a piece of that apple pie? I know. So, I know. <laughs> I know we have at least 70 pies donated so far. Mine is, uh, it was mentioned actually on local Fox News when Chief Schleife was on the other night, they asked him which pie. I don't know if that's a good idea, but his favorite is called banana split and I'm the one that makes that. Wow. So uh, we're concerned, I only make two of them. My, yeah. my pies look beautiful, but you wouldn't want to eat them. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and we like homemade pies. You won't find many purchased pies at this social. So Joyce, I know he's going away from the pies because I won't be here for that. 
The raffle tickets are for this bear. How much are those? They're uh, five dollars a piece, or five for twenty. Is wow. what I heard. Could you get me some? Sure. <laughs> you bet. Yep. You bet. You want a hundred? Suckered <laughs> 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 me. There you go. <laughs> Thank you very much. Go make sure that you get your tickets. Well. Thank you. Okay. Hope to see you this weekend. Thank you. And I do appreciate public comment in the middle because I haven't shown up for a long time. <laughs> I always enjoy this because yes, I do. learn so much. Very appreciate good. you, Joyce. We appreciate Thanks, both of you. Well, yeah. make, sure you for make sure you tell the rest of the crew that we okay. said thank you and appreciate their support, too. We sure will. Right, Brian? Okay. Thank you. Do you need a motion to go into executive session? You. That's my motion. Got a motion by Commissioner Hedgehog to go into executive session, a second by Commissioner Laster. All those in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Yeah, motion carried. If I won't come back till 1030. Need a motion to come back to regular session. So moved. Second. Got a motion and a second for the discussion. All those in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Sandy. Again, Sandy Sortland, HR Generalist. We have a motion to authorize a grant manager position in the auditor's office to transfer one FTE from the sheriff's office to the auditor's office and to move Liz Hassett to DBM C41, step 7, 32.60 an hour, effective July 25th, 2021. So moved. We've got a motion by Commissioner LaCroix. Uh, is there a second? Second. And a second by Commissioner Roskinect. Uh to authorize a grant manager position in the auditor's office uh, for the discussion. Any public comment? All those in favor of the motion indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Mm -hmm. Motion carried. Thank, Thank you, Sammy. You. Appreciate it. Oh, probably. So the motion, the motion was to move to authorize. We had it in front of us, so failed to read it. Moved to authorize a grant manager position in the auditor's office to transfer one FTE from sheriff's office to the auditor's office and to move Liz Hazzett to DBM C41 step 7, 32.60 an hour, effective July 25, 2021. That was the motion that was approved. Uh, need a motion now to go to a board of adjustment. Move to go on the board of adjustment. Second. I got a motion and a second. Uh, for the discussion, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Brittany. Good morning, Commissioners. Brittany Molitor, Planning Director. Item A is variance VA 2113 to reduce the setback for a telecommunications tower from 500 feet to 30 feet to an agriculture district less than 40 acres. Uh, the property in question is 1.5 acres. It is zoned highway service district. Uh, it is currently a consists of a fire department. Staff is recommending approval because they believe that there is a special condition on the property. Um, I will go through the two-prong approach. Um, I will just read the answers. Does it injure the neighborhood? No, the request does not appear to be a threat of nuisance to the neighborhood. Does it conform to the neighborhood? Telecommunication support structures are allowed in highway service districts in accordance with Section 316 of the Pennington County Zoning Ordinance. <laughs> there is one tower within 1,600 feet of this tower. However, there is no more room for co-location at this site. Number three, does it conform to the general purposes of the zoning ordinances? No, the zoning ordinance requires a 500-foot setback for the construction of a telecommunications support structure near an agriculture district of less than 40 acres. Does it harm the public health, safety, or general welfare of the community? No, placement of the telecommunications support structures within the required setback does not appear to harm the public or community. So I'll go through prong two, does a special condition exist? Telecommunication support structures must be sited in areas that provide adequate radio coverage. A public safety tower will provide additional radio coverage for the area and thus assist emergency service providers. The topography and location provide service area to an area that does not otherwise have adequate reliable radio coverage. 
And if a special ex condition exists, does the enforcing the ordinance create an unnecessary hardship? Yes, the area has a significant deficiency in radio coverage for this area. And B, if a special circumstance exists, does granting the variance observe the ordinance spirit while doing substantial justice? Yes, allowing this variance would allow a telecommunications tower and provide a radio coverage to an area that does not currently have reliable coverage. Allowing this telecommunications tower will provide this reliable coverage. Um, also, um, one thing to note is that the telecommunications facility permit TC2101 was approved by the Planning Commission on June 14th, 2021. Questions? Mr. Chair. Commissioner LaCroix. My, Brittany, my only concern was on this is, was probably the location. And maybe this doesn't apply as far as uh, the communications. You know, I think the commission approved a while back uh, with some of these towers of being decorative to look like trees. Am I thinking the wrong lines on here? So on these ones, because of the radio type That's, of, um, I guess, things that have to be put on it, those stealth towers and the other types of towers won't work well. They do need to have these kinds of towers because of the attachments that go on them. Okay. I was just, I, I knew the commissioner had passed that a while back about requiring some of them to, you know, you see some of these cell phone towers looking like trees and so forth. And... The location of this one would actually work perfect for that because it's very across from Sitting Bowl and, and in a wooded area, but but that's why I asked. Yeah, it's not a single-use tower. Yeah. Right, and I believe that um, the height of the structure has to be above what a stealth tower is capable of being as far as an engineering. I don't think a stealth tower can be over the 199 feet. Okay. Is there any members of the public that wishes to address this issue? Seeing none, bring it back to the commission. For approval. Got a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. Motion by Commissioner Hadcock, second by Commissioner Ross Connect to approve. All those in favor, indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Morning, Commissioners. Jason Tennyson, Assistant Planning Director. Agenda item B is variance 21-14 to allow an off-premise sign to be located within 1,500 feet of a residential district slash dwelling unit. The applicant is Jeff Devaney. Site location is 23855 Highway 385. Uh, property is one acre zone highway service district. Existing land use is retail stores. Surrounding zoning to the north and east is rural residential district. And to the west and south is highway service district. Access is off three, Highway 385. There is special flood hazard area on the subject property. Staff recommends denial due to the close proximity of the sign to a residential district and dwelling units. However, if the board disagrees, uh, staff recommends three conditions be included. Staff takes a two-prong approach when they determine their recommendation. I'll start with prong number one, whether granting the variance runs counter to the public interest. Uh, criteria number one, staff found no. Many on and off-premise signs exist throughout the corridor of Highway 385. The addition of uh, this sign should not injure the neighborhood. Number two, no, the nearest residential district is approximately 105 feet away from the proposed sign. Number three, the zoning ordinance states no off-premise sign shall be erected or placed closer than 1,500 feet from any residential district and or dwelling unit. Number four is NA. Number five, the staff found no. The proposed sign will need to be will meet will need to meet the five foot setbacks from the property lines of the subject property. This appears to be enough distance from Highway 385 and Penalua Gulch Road as to not harm the public safety, health, or general welfare of the community. Prong two determines whether special conditions exist to grant the variance. Staff found that no no physical conditions exist that would warrant approval of this variance. The request was sent out for interdepartmental review. Re Staff received no concerns or objections. Uh, property history. Uh, there are four signs on the subject property now. As you can see from this picture here, there is an eight by 12 freestanding double faced on-premise sign. There are also two 12 by 20 wall mounted on-premise signs as well as multiple temporary on-premise signs. 
the applicant is proposing to add a 24 by 28 off-premise sign to the subject property. This is the sketch of that sign. The proposed sign will consist of two 10 by 24 double-faced advertising signs and will be unlighted. Again, Pennington County Zoning Ordinance states that no off-premise sign shall be erected or placed closer to than 1,500 feet from any residential district and or dwelling unit. Uh, this is the site plan that the applicant has provided. This will be the location of the sign. And again, these are the closest uh, residential structures. This zoning dis or this uh, residential district is approximately 105 feet away from the proposed sign. And this uh, closest house is approximately 190 feet away from the sign. Staff has received no concerns or objections from adjacent landowners. And again, staff recommends denial. Are there any members of the public? Is, is Jeff here? Yes. Would you like to speak on this, Jeff? Or do you want to just answer questions? or? I'll answer any questions they got. I mean, okay. I'm open. Okay. Let me just ask again. Is there any, anybody from the public here wishing to either support or oppose this item? Seeing none, questions the commission has. Chairman. Commissioner Adcock. Um, because there's so much highway service on this property and around it and where he's putting the sign, I, for me personally, I don't believe it's going to be an issue. Um, if, like I said, if you look at the corridor, if you bring up the zone map for me, Jason, please. You got highway service and commercial along that. And usually, unfortunately, someone put residential right next to the, the road on 385, where usually you would have a buffer of highway service there. So I'm in agreement with the sign, and um, I'll let you guys speak. In. If someone else wants to make the motion, they can, but sure. I'm in Commissioner agreement. Commissioner uh, <clears throat> A few years ago, we across the street, you got the smoke jumpers, and they asked for a variance on the height of the sign, which has now got a Cessna 180 on it. That's across the street. And then a couple months ago, we agreed the variance on the Rushmore Candy sign, a height variance. So we're doing this because we're doing it along main corridors that rely on tourism and traffic. So uh, to me, and I can, when you say 1,500 feet away, you got heavy industrial across the street from these residents, you got a, a sawmill. So uh, to me, I don't have a problem with it either. Mr. Mr. Chairman, oh. I got, I'll make a motion, but I got one question. So if you, if this is approved, like that sign right there, you're going to take that one down and I, stick to Yeah, the, that will be down. That, okay. Yes. So that, that, that would be my questions that, that you're going to, with that, with that question answered, I'd make, move to approve variance 21-14 with three conditions because I think granting the variance does run, uh, doesn't run counter to the public interest. I think the special condition is, is, is the area, as Mr. As Mr. Roskinek stated, is you have the, that area is, um, conforms to that area. I'm sorry. <laughs> Better conforms to that sorry. The property does. Uh, I think that excusing the, the little enforcement of the ordinance uh, in that, Enforcement would cause unnecessary hardship to which the use of the property when others are have variants around you. And I think by granting this variance, we not only observe the ordinance, but the spirit is to ensure substantial justice is done. Is there a second? Second. Got a motion and a second. Further discussion? Mr. Chairman, I was going to ask another question, and Jason, if you don't mind. I, I know we just talked about the smoke jumper having a variance and another business in the area. Are there, are there several other variances in that area for signs like this? Uh, not that I'm aware of, just the uh, one for the smoke jumper. Okay. <clears throat> Nothing. Fair enough. Thank you. Okay. Further discussion? All those in favor of the motion indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Approved. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Mm hmm Item C. Good morning again. Item C is variance VA 2115 to allow an additional dwelling unit in excess of 40 units on a dead end road system. Uh, this property is located at 23359 Bradsky Road. Uh, the reason for this request is that they are 
platting a one acre lot through the city of Rapid City. And in order to get a building permit for a dwelling unit on that one acre lot, they will need this variance. So we do look at variances on a two prong approach and I'll go through these. Uh, does it injure the neighborhood? Yes, the neighborhood already exceeds the maximum number of dwellings allowed on a dead end road system. Does it conform to the neighborhood? No, the neighborhood currently contains over 60 dwellings on this dead end road system. Does it conform to the general purpose of the zoning ordinance? No, the zoning ordinance states in all zoning districts, no more than 40 dwellings are permitted along a dead end road system. Number four, does it conform to the comprehensive plan currently in place? Yes, the current comprehensive plan identifies the property as low density residential district, which requires a half acre minimum lot size. Number five, does it harm the public safety, health, or general welfare of the community? Yes, increasing density on a dead end road system jeopardizes public safety. For prong two, does a special condition, exceptional narrowness, topography, siting, or the like exist on the property? No, no physical condition exists that would warrant approval of this variance. Um, currently, as the property sits today, there's a single family residence, some outbuildings, detached garage, uh, loafing shed. Um, just some history on the Bradsky Road. Um, there have been several plats and other lots that have been um, denied by this board uh, for additional dwelling units on this dead end road system. So here's uh, from the approach for this is the approach for that lot one. This is looking towards Highway 44 uh, from that property. Um, so this lot is actually before the Bradsky Road Bridge. So that's looking to the south um, with the Bradsky Road Bridge. And also um, prior to them Jeremy. requesting this plat, uh, they did get approved. Uh, it's before the bridge? It's before the bridge. So then it's not really on a dead end road because they can, they don't well, have to go Well, it's Bradsky Road. It's the dead end road system, but it's before the bridge. Just yes. that's... That's the main point. Yes. Okay. Sorry well, and, to interrupt you, Ms. Sure. Brittany. Oh. And then um, in October of 2020, the Planning Commission did approve a conditional use permit uh, for a housing for hired help conditional use on this property, but the property owner has decided to plant this property off instead of um, using that CUP. So staff is recommending denial. However, if uh, the board disagrees with staff's recommendation, we don't recommend any conditions of approval be included. So Mr. Chairman. Okay, uh, let me ask, are the Holmbergs here? Yes. Would you like Would you like to say anything or do you want to just answer questions? What would they you would, please? Uh, hi, my name is Mike Holmberg. Um, as she stated in October, I did apply for a variance uh, to put in a hired hand residence there, which consisted of a trailer house. Um, I actually have a building permit for that already. I've done this because of the time constraints, the cost, um, the lead time to get a trailer house at, at this time frame was a lot, a long time. So, and the hired help is, was my son. Um, I had plenty of land here, so we decided because of a lot of the stuff that we can do ourselves, it would be easier and cheaper to get what they want for a stick-built house. So all I'm asking is I've already have a building permit, put a trailer there, I've done the flood certs, I've done all the, and I've been approved for everything. And this is like 1,500 feet from Highway 44, so the dead-end road, I, I get all that, I understand why. Um, if there's an issue, <laughs> I'm out first. Um, so all I'm trying to do is just change the structure sure. from what I've already been here and done this one time already. I want to stick build a house. It's all been engineered. So I know how high it has to be, where it has to be. Um, the septic system is already in place. The access is in place. I have a, uh, address in place for it already. Uh, all I'd say, I'm just changing the structure of the dwelling is all. Chairman. Commissioner LaCroix. I, th I think you answered my questions. Okay, Commissioner I, Adcock. So. Um, Mike, I remember you coming in for your conditional use permit. Um, the main thing we thought is you'd probably turn it into a regular house later. I think I mentioned it, that you probably would anyway. 
if your son didn't take it or when your son wasn't going to use it. Oh, no, that wasn't going to happen. But we always said um, it was probably going to happen. And now you're wanting to plot it. You're wanting to do something else with it. Um, sometimes, and I don't know if that was the issue, um, you kind of set your set us up for something where in the end was the same thing that I figured was going to happen later because you had enough land to put another house on there and then sell it later. So um, with that being said, um, <laughs> actually not opposed because it's before the bridge. It's just the game that you said you were going to do something and, and you did exactly what I thought you were going to do in the first place. But it was two years lead time to get a trailer house built. Yes, but you're and still then doing... And and everything went... You're, Mike, you're still splitting the lot and doing something different and building another house on it, which most people do when they have that much land after they come and ask for conditional use and use it for something else for a while. But not against that either because I'm a business person without sounding facetious in one sense and the other uh, common sense. Um, but you're also before the bridge, and most of the time I would not agree after the bridge to put another dwelling on there but you can get in and out there is enough there's a little hundred year floodplain but my bottom line is um i'm not in disagreement with this i'm just kind of um used to people telling us one thing and do another even if something else happens i most of the time just, I, I did intentionally want to put a trade house there because it would work the best of what the thing is yeah. but circumstances beyond that yes. but the that's price of lumber and all the price and yeah. and they couldn't you know yes my son's getting married in fall yep and his mother and i are helping him get a, a house established yep. you and, know and i and didn't I want him that. to spend a bunch of money to get something to get him by I know, Mike, but I'm just saying and, a lot and of people, I, I, I this, appreciate this isn't your... the only person that, that said, that'll never happen, this will, this is going to stay like this, I'll remove it when I'm done, that kind of thing. Um, we do it all the time on 40 acres, and we let someone have a five acre and then have another plot. So, again, I sound like a crabby lady in what sense, I'm not trying to be, but... I, I wish like... I could have just taken what I had and changed the dwelling instead of going to plat it and... I've been up here a long time and heard a lot of stories. In the long run, it ends up doing the same thing you're doing. So it's not not my first time doing this. But I also am compassionate enough to know you have a son. And number two, um, that this is a 40-acre lot or dead-end road. But in this case, it's before a bridge. And I'm for you today for that reason. Um, most of the times. For the questions, comments. I comments. Came at you a bit. <laughs> Sorry. Thank you. Sorry. Anything else from the commission? Mr. Chair, motion. I'll make the motion to approve with uh, conditions. Is there a second? Second. Got a motion by Commissioner Roskinek, a second by Commissioner LaCroix. Uh, further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. What, what are the conditions? Uh, was there conditions on it? If there were. I only no. said that as a safety mechanism. There might not be any conditions. Okay. There okay. isn't. I thought I had, I had satisfied them all. So maybe. Yeah. Thank you, Mike. Adam D. Uh, Sag, environmental planner. Item D is subdivision regulation variance SV 21-13. It is to waive the requirement to submit percolation test and soil profile hole information for the subject property. The landowner is Catherine Palicki, surveyor's baseline surveying. Uh, the location is at 23072 High Sega Road. Uh, the access is off High Sega Road and there is no special flood hazard area on the property. When approving variances, we look we take the two-pronged approach. For prong number one, number one, does it injure the neighborhood? Proposed track two is vacant land. Waiving percolation tests and soil profile hole information does not injure the neighborhood. Number two, the neighborhood is residential in nature. Percolation tests and soil profile hole information are required at the building permit application. 
Number three, percolation test and a foot deep soil profile information are required for any lot or subdivision that will utilize an on-site wastewater treatment system. That point has no plans to develop proposed track two, therefore the lot will not utilize an on-site wastewater disposal system. Any future plans to develop proposed lot two would require soil profile and percolation test information at the time of the building permit. Number four, the current comprehensive plan identifies the property as rural residential district, which requires a three acre lot minimum. Track two will be 6.12 acres. Number five, waiving percolation profile hole information should not harm the public safety, health, or general welfare of the community. And for problem number two, whether a special condition exists, uh, there are no special conditions that would warrant granting this request. However, any plans to develop proposed track two would require so low profile hole and percolation test information be submitted at the time of the building permit. Uh, currently on the property, there's a single family residence with four accessory structures, all of which have proper building permits, and there's two on site wastewater treatment systems. The applicant is going through the platting process. Uh, to uh, subdivide into uh, two lots with a well lot. Tract one will be 23 acres and will contain all the structures. Tract two will be 6.12 acres and will be vacant. This was right around for inter department review. There were no comments or concerns received. And on May 18th, 2021, the Board of Commissioners approved layout plan LPL 21-21 with conditions. Uh, therefore, staff is recommending denial. There is no special conditions that exist to grant the request. However, if uh, the Board of Adjustment disagrees and approves the request, staff recommends that the following condition be included and that the variance only applies to Track 2. Is, uh, is Catherine in the audience or her representative? Good morning, Commissioners. My name is Mark Poliski. Catherine's my wife. Okay. Any questions, yeah. I'd be happy to entertain them. Very is good. Sure. Uh, Commissioner Ross Connect. Um, so this is in the process of being platted, Mark. Pardon me. The, this lot is in the process of being platted. Correct. And once it's platted, do you know exactly where you're going to place the residence? Uh, not at this time. No, we're doing this for estate right. purposes and whatnot. I'm just going back to about a month ago when we did the 12 lots off the Hill City Keystone Road, and they were like five acres in size, a little bit smaller than this one. And we decided that because we did, when you got six acres, you could go out there anywhere on six acres and put a profile hole, but build your home somewhere else. So I, uh, I support uh, your request because if you don't know where you're going to put the house, you don't know where to do your profile and perk test. Right. I, due to terrain requirements, I have a pretty good idea where the house would possibly go at some point in the future. Well, I would say that before you get a building permit, you'd have to do Correct. do this. But at this that. point in time, I think it's a little premature myself. Right. Chair, yeah. Commissioner LaCroix. I'd, I'd make the motion to uh, move to approve SB 21-12 with one con condition um, because uh, right now he doesn't know where the bill, you know, spot's going to be to do the perk tests. And I think uh, that excuses the literal enforcement of the ordinance. I think by doing what we're doing, uh, we'll have a better idea when it comes time for him to b get a billing permit, we'll know where they're going to be, right, and right. it'll be required when you right. need Right, and I understand that. that that's a requirement of the building permit. So, uh, so I don't think, uh, by granting the variances, uh, I think we're still observing the ordinance in spirit. Second. Got a motion. Is there a second? Second. second. by Commissioner Adcock. Uh, Chairman. Commissioner Adcock. Mark, are you, this is your property and you're selling it? No, no. We're you're just, buying it? We're, we own it. We've been there for 20 years. Okay. And are Plan you? to be there. You know, as long as God lets us be. He said they're doing it for estate purposes. Right. And you're not um, subdividing and making a development in that area? Okay. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. We may at some point in time build a, a home for our, for our son or something like that, but have no intentions <laughs> to subdivide. You're good. Uh, kind of similar to... You're good. A subdivision in, in another house, um, you know, is a little bit different than, yeah, right. having right. 10 lots there. Yeah. So. For the questions. Thank you, Got Mark. It. Thank you. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carried. Uh, need a motion to uh, come Move. out of a board of adjustment. Move second. <clears throat> Got a motion and a second. 
All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Consent agenda. Uh, Code Stack Environmental Planner. The Board of Commissioners uses a consent agenda to act on non-controversial non and routine planning and zoning items. The consent agenda is acted upon by one motion and vote from the board. Items may be removed from consent agenda and placed on the regular agenda at the request of a board member or a citizen. The consent agenda for the planning and zoning contains the following items. Minor plot MPL 21-34, Jessica Hessler, Seven Wonders LLC, Fist Land, Land Surveying is the agent and uh, approval is recommended. Move, move approval. Second. I've got a motion and a second to approve. Further discussion? Does anybody, any member of the public want to have this removed from the consent calendar? All those in favor of the motion indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Item F, Cody. Okay. Item F is road construction within a section line right of way, CS 21-03. It is to construct a road within the section line right of way to provide access to property. Uh, the applicant and owner is GL Development Company LLC, Lyndon Bolt. Uh, the location is at 12807 Old Hill City Road. Uh, act, uh, size of the property is 7.83 acres. Access is off Old Hill City Road, and there is no special flood hazard area on the property. Uh, when constructing a road within a section line, uh, ordinance 14 standards must be met. Uh, the applicant is going to meet ordinance 14 standards. This was routed around for interdepartment department review. Uh, the county highway came back and said if the road is built to the specifications as shown in Exhibit A of ordinance 14, the highway department is not opposed to waiving the required engineered road plans. Uh, the proposed road construction will meet ordinance 14 standards. Uh, they are going to be requesting a variance to or a waiver to uh, waive engineered road design plans and the road will access um, two lots in the proposed subdivision. So with that, staff is recommending approval of construction within a section line right away, CS 21-03 with conditions. So moved with conditions. Second. Okay. I've got a motion from Commissioner Adcock and a second from Commissioner Laster to approve with conditions. Uh, is there any members of the public wishing to address this item? Any further discussion by the Board of Commissioners? Not. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion carried. Item, item G is uh, the waiver of uh, the request not to submit engineered road construction plans. The applicant is Lyndon Bolt. Uh, the section line will be used to access two lots, and the highway department uh, commented if the road is built with, to the specifications as shown in Exhibit A of Ordinance 14, the highway department is not opposed to waiving the required engineered uh, design road plans. Move approval with staff for recommendations. Second. Got a motion by Commissioner Adcock, second by Commissioner Lassiter. Uh, is there any public comments relative to this? Hearing none, and back to the commission. Any further comments? Uh, one question. Question. Uh, if they follow ordinance 14, what would the criteria, just the fiscal characteristics of the drive or street have to be? Uh, so what are, like, what's the road, road standards for it? So the surface area, ditches, just curious. Uh, I, they'll have to do uh, six inches of gravel. 24-foot road. Yeah, 25, 24-foot wide road. Um, uh, ditches be two feet with... So if you go to page three of the staff report, okay. that, that's all of the ordinance 14 standards. Okay. That are in there. Thank you. Any further questions? All those in favor of the motion indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Item H. Good morning, commissioners. Madison Ransom, assistant environmental planner. Agenda item H is to request a conditional use permit CU-2135 to allow a recreational vehicle park on the subject property. The applicant and, and landowner is RMS Load LLC, Matt Keck, and he is in the audience if you have any questions. The agent is AE2S. 
The location is at 23845 Highway 385. The access is off Stenson Meadows Road. The size of the property is 7.6 acres, and there's no special flood ha hazard on, on the property. Is Mr. Keck in the audience? Yes. You, is there anything you'd like to add to it, Mr. Keck, or do you want to just answer questions? Or? Okay. Is there any members of the public wishing to address this issue? Yes. Come forward. Just identify yourself. Uh, Brett Stenson. We have the property behind and the uh, where the proposals off our easement. Um, we, we were not made aware of this project till it had been going on for about a month and we were driving through construction. We finally uh, emailed Matt to see what was going on. That's the first time we found out what was going on. Um, he said that we're going to add additional parking. We didn't know where. We got the notice for the first meeting, uh, two working days before that meeting, this first commission meeting. Uh, so we weren't very well informed of it. I don't believe the permit was put in on time. I think they were applying for that. My opposition is basically all, the last thing I saw, we, saw, we received a drawing from Matt two days after the last meeting that showed where the parking was, and all of the parking is in our easement. Yeah, it appears they Mr. want to just Stinson, take up our uh, easement. Uh, when you refer to the last meeting. The, there was a meeting on Monday the 28th. Okay, by the Planning Commission. I guess so. Okay. Not you guys, but our folks. Okay. I happen to have been on that Planning Commission meeting too. <clears throat> Go ahead. So anyway, it's been a real weird process. Uh, we didn't, you know, until we emailed to find out what was going on, we had construction equipment right in the middle of our road every day. I had to go home, drive around that. Uh, we've had constant um, problems in the easement with parking. Uh, from the brewery itself with trailers. It's, they just kind of park wherever they like, and oftentimes we have to kind of weave through the driveway to get through there. Um, I'm not sure if where the parking is shown on this map, but essentially all the parking down the lower end is still an easement. Um, Where's the easement? Can you show us that? It is. Um, we'll have the young lady show us. Um, Actually, don't, I don't think it's on this presentation. I, can, it's see, in the I can see it's the on, dotted sir. line. Hold on, sir. Do you got your pointer, Holly? Hold on one second. It's up there. There's a pointer up there, honey, that you can okay. point to the screen. You might have to. Uh, we received no information on drainage or septic systems or that. I don't know that we're supposed to. Uh, the letter we received for the planning okay. meeting was in our mailbox. I, I don't know if you don't have to have signatures for them anymore. But so how wide is that easement? This is the road the road easement. Foot. Oh, sorry. So the access easement is on the opposite on both sides of the road, which makes up the sixty six feet. Okay. But this is just the road easement, which is. So sixty six feet is a road easement or is a access, section line? The access easement. Is it a section line or an easement? It's an easement. We sold them the property originally and wanted that 66 foot in there. Yes, sir. We have 48 acres beyond that that we didn't know if we would need that if we wanted to develop it sometime. So, sir, you sold them the property on highway service. Did you know it was going to be commercial? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Chair. Commissioner Roskinek. Brett, uh, you, you indicated that you have 40 acres beyond that. Yes. So there's, if I recall, that's just two two larger tracks. It's three. Okay. So the sixty six foot easement would allow you to develop that and further on subdivide it. But if we were to allow Matt to do the parking, that would not impede that process for you to subdivide further, would it? Because you still have your sixty six foot easement it, pursuant it, to. It wouldn't so. allow me to put a proper road into that, and where they had proposed the road, and I'm not seeing it on this, or the parking, we would have that 24 foot to go through, and basically every time somebody's backing out, or we would have to wait for them just to go through the road. 
and there's also no walk surface there so right now people just use the road for walking and so it's not very safe from that standpoint and where they do park if if there's people parked there they just park in the middle of the road so uh, there's been a parking issue since right they had the they were talking there. about ordinance 14 and if i recall ordinance 14 indicates that you got to have a 24 foot surface and that's what I, if I looked at this right, that's what they're saying you'll have for driving? That's what was allowed in the drawing. Okay. With parking right up to that on each side. And it showed 18 foot parking. I know my pickup's 21 foot long, so I'm not sure how 18 foot parking works right up against the road. And if somebody pulls in there with a trailer, they're going to have the road blocked off. And it happens all the time. So, Chairman. Commissioner Hedcock. Commissioner Kett, come up. So, I'm not opposed to the RV park. I was opposed to how it was set up with parking and maybe we could serve it and and the fact that we really didn't even know what was going on the permits weren't so uh, sir what we're going to do is we're going to ask mr keck some of those questions so maybe um he can answer some of those questions you're talking about sir okay thank you sir thank you matt they still stand up here you can no you can, you can take a seat thank you sir Matt, the other day at the Planning Commission, you had a you had a different map that we looked at, and apparently we do not have that map. Huh? Yeah, this one here is the one I'm referring to. Thanks. So, Ms. can I ask him questions? Sure. Oh, thank you, sir. So, um, where Matt? Can you answer some of his questions? Basically, the parking, what the road's going to be, why people are parking on there now. Maybe there's some construction and things going on that you're trying to do. Um, if you could explain that um, to us and to Mr. Um, your neighbor, sorry, you forget. Yes, Stenson. Stenson. Thank you, Mr. Stenson. Yes, there's a Metkeck RMS load. Uh, we are the property owner. And there is a 24-foot wide roadway that uh, the Stensons use to access their property. Right. Um, and the, as they correctly stated, there have been people that park there. We have, uh, over the period of years, put no parking signs up, fire lane. Uh, we've done as much as we can to keep people from parking there to mixed success. Um, oh, are they parking there, Matt, because of your business? They are parking there primarily for the brewery unrelated to the campground. Okay. Um, and so to address the problem, I uh, recognize the need to expand the parking. Uh, there we go. So the brewery is the building to the gray building, am I correct? Before correct. you're, and who owns that? Uh, RMS Load owns that and leases it to Prairie Berry LLC. So you are part of that? Yes. Okay. So you can see the easement, the 66 foot easement. The roadway itself, the 24 foot roadway is what is in uh, the red line or the red um, filled in corridor. And then on each side of that, you can see a dashed line, which is the outlines of the 66 foot easement. So with your permission, I have a hand up. Absolutely. So Matt, um, on that road, that 24 foot road, did Mr. Stetson know and see this drawing that there's parking on each side of it? There is currently is not any parking, and that is the issue. So people um, on typically holiday weekends, um, busy weekends, people would be parking along that 24-foot road. So we're in complete agreement with the Stetsons that something needs to be done to address that. So our solution to that was this parking plan. And so, which is on each side of the road, Mr. Stetson? Well, so the, this is all on our property. So their property line uh, is at the very top uh, of this drawing. But then, if you if you built the twenty four foot road and he gave you a sixty six foot easement, you're using the other, and he knew that you're going to use the the easement for parking. Well, so I would. I had our attorney David Lust look into this issue. Um, and so I just want to clear up the easement. So, um, and that's what this memo is from uh, David Lust. So the question is, can RMS Load LLC use part of the 66-foot easement for parking? 
And the short answer is yes, so long as the parking stalls do not fall within 24 foot roadway used for ingress and egress to and from the Stenson property. So in essence, South Dakota case law is clear on this issue. Um, page two, the Stensons do not have the right to determine who can and cannot have access to the easement. Uh, towards the end of page two, RMS load may use the land in the easement not designated for ingress or egress in any reasonable way that does not interfere with the dominant estate owner's ability to travel upon the roadway. This reasonable use includes using the non-roadway portion of the easement for parking, signage, curbing, planting, or removal of trees, sod, or other vegetation. So South Dakota case law clearly states that RMS load as the owner of the easement has limited rights as to what we can do with those that easement. Parking is one of those. So Mr. Kick, did um, the planning department agree when you were doing your plan that parking and that road by the road was a good place to put parking? Uh, yes, the planning commission unanimously approved this. They approved parking right by the road? Yes, this, this plat or this layout was uh, submitted as part of the approval. So that's one of the conditions I believe is parking in accordance with this plan. So a guy gave you an easement at 66 feet thinking that you're gonna keep it in a road and because you can legally put parking on each side of that road, um, I don't know if anybody's been on a road that they have parking on each side and how much that causes issues instead of putting a parking lot in some kind of parking space. People are always dry, always pulling in and out on that road right where that parking is. So it, cause, it causes some major issues. So I understand what they're saying. I understand also that you're, you have that right to do that. But as a good business owner, I think I would think about putting a parking lot somewhere or working with um, the Stetsons and putting a parking lot somewhere besides right next to a road. Because you already know they're just going to keep coming once you let people park on the side of the road, it's gonna, they're going to just keep going down, meaning they're not going to know where to stop par parking on that road. So I would, I would think that would be a bad place to put parking. Uh, what this plan does not show is the terrain. And so that parking as it uh, to the, what would be to the south side is uh, sloping terrain. So we, it's not, it's not, it looks flat, but it's not flat. If it were flat, we could put it there. But you also have RVs and things there and people um, do not um, read signs and stuff very well. So pretty soon they'll start parking some of their RVs and their bigger vehicles right there by that road as well. So, and I think he wants to develop why he put that 66 foot wide easement. If he, I'm gonna guess he wants to develop or sell that to somebody else that's coming in there next. Um, so I'm not in agreement with the, where you have the parking. I think your RV and, and what your plan is and the commercial things you're doing there are pretty awesome, sir. But um, if there's any way you can move your parking um, or it's more sensible uh, for not only yourself, but the next people coming up that probably are gonna buy that property, I think you'll just keep having problems with that parking and it's not gonna be worth the headache. But that's up to you. But. I'm not in agreement if you're going to leave the parking where it's at. Mr. Mr. Chair. Commissioner mm -hmm. Oshkinak. You know, that 66 foot, it's a right of way. It's, an, it, it's a width that fits legally, but, you know, I, I'd try to look at it. If, is a 24 foot physically enough to support further subdivision? And if that is not encroached on, I think the 24 foot would be adequate. If it's a good driving surface and it follows Ordinance 14. But I want to remind everybody that item 19 on this is that the conditional use permit be reviewed one year on a com yeah. complete basis. And with that being said, uh, that would give the other party plenty of time to sit there and document some cases where uh, we didn't follow through and this would be reviewed. So uh, with that, uh, I think that item 19 that conditions the safety mechanism to, uh, to work with the Stetsons. Commissioner LaCroix. I'm going to make a motion to approve the conditional use permit CU 2131 with 19 conditions. I've got a motion. Is there a second? 
Second. Second by Commissioner Roskinek. Further discussion? Chairman. Mr. Chairman. Commissioner ahead, Lassiter. Yes. <clears throat> I just want to clarify something. I want to make sure here. Um, Stenson, you guys have a 60 foot, 66 foot uh, easement through that property. <clears throat> if you don't mind coming up here, I got a couple of questions. We want to add as well. So, if I understood a statement earlier, y'all may develop your area up in that. We have 48 acres beyond that, definitely. And, we're we're, and, and we were told at the time we need a 66 foot easement if we wanted to do right. that. The county made us put that in pretty much. Do you maintain that easement? No. We you do don't mean. Someone, we, we blade it and we plow snow where RMS load does not. Gotcha. Yes. So we, and so we maintain, maintain it. it down to we about the middle of that parking or up that to the, where our property park. line is, where the red blob is, I guess. Okay. Gotcha. And then yeah. if you decided to, to do some construction up north to, to increase what you're doing up there, I don't know what you have plans to do. If you decided to do that in a year, they put parking in this area that may impede that particular aspect. But you do have the right then to come down there and make that road accessible uh, appropriately, too. Is that correct? actually wanted to do that this year, and this has impeded our road work because we didn't know what was going on. So and I understood yeah, that I that 20 it. foot wide, you need ditches on both sides. There's no so there's, ditches. That's what I was going to say. There's no, no drainage room for that. ditches. Two feet on each side. part of that ordinance that was yeah. read before. That so they, there's no drainage ditches there right now. 30. They didn't put those in already. Okay, thank you. And, oh. and another point where you said the, the terrain on this side is kind of steep. It's a hill. So was the, that the, there? The, they cut it the down. area where they put the RV park was a hill, and they've been moving dirt since the middle of May on that. So you can cut and fill. He's got an acre and a half to the Fairman. south. Moving dirt there is not Mr. an issue. Okay, so bottom line is you got a 24-foot easement. You just read the road um, agreements. you got two feet on each side. That put you at 26, 28 feet. They said there's 18 feet on each side. That doesn't end up. Um, I'm just saying um, you're not leaving enough. When you park next to there, you can ask the highway department if you're trying to build the road and you have parking right next to it, you have drainage. They're going to be parking in the drainage. They're going to be and not going to want to park there pretty soon. So actually you've caused an issue with a road coming through there. Whether you reviewed in a year or not, I'm just saying you don't have enough room for road and parking in the same area without causing people issues. People, like I said, it's not safe for people, children, dogs. We're always passing children and people, dogs. That, that, there, that right. is the walkway, too. There's no... Right. Okay. Does the planning Sorry. department have any further uh, information on this? As far as the RV park, the parking, the parking has to do with the miners' right. brewery and not the actual conditional use permit for the RV park. So that was our only comment for. So the parking add. is not inclusive of the RV park? I'm confused. So yeah, explain that, that a little further, Brittany. Yeah. Okay, so the RV park is a separate conditional use permit. The, the miners is a use by right. That is a commercial... Um, property that's within that highway service district. This um, RV park. So my understanding of them creating this um, parking area is because it, to delineate some kind, give people some kind of direction on where to park. Right now it's somewhat of a free-for-all. So I believe Mr. Keck was trying to at least show somewhere, give some direction for people so they had a place to park for um the miners brewery because right now it's not delineated out there's really no clear area so they're just parking wherever um, so i think this was in response to that not necessarily in response to the rv park the so chairman commissioner Atka. Brittany. so they built a brewery with no area didn't they have a layout of where the parking was they did when they submitted the building permit um right and it met the requirements at the time the building permit okay so at this time, they're finding that they don't meet the building permit requirements because of parking. They're using it, like you said, they're using the road now. So you've com combined two problems, a brewery that doesn't have enough parking, and then what happens when the RV doesn't have enough parking? 
Right. So that was in response to um, mainly, my understanding, it was in response to mostly with the miners not having enough parking area because there's other things that go on on the on the property. So I think that's kind of the overflow parking area for the the entirety of the property. So let me ask you something. You agreed to a building permit, but now you found out there's not enough parking on an area in a commercial zone. What do you do once they, you've already gave them a building permit and find that they don't have enough parking on the property and they're affecting other issues. Right. So areas. then we would just work with the property owner to get more parking and that's what he has is proposing through this plan. So again, you're going to build a 24 and you're in agreement, 24 foot road with two feet dishes and the cars are going to park in the ditches next to the road. So when we look at rights of way, as far as even if you look out in the city, like just outside the building, if you look in where the right of way is, there's parking in the right of way. If you look in any residential area, there's parking in rights of way. So that's a common practice to have parking in rights of way. Well, um, in the city, it makes sense. But in right. the county, if you need drainage ditches, I guess I don't know the lay of the land. You said it was right. steep. So is it steep in those ditches? Is it flat all the way around it so those ditches aren't going to be an issue? Flat up on top and then drops off right. coming down. And I do know that there's quite a bit of drainage improvements that have been done and engineered on this property. There's actually a drainage um, pond like in the front of that miner's brewery where drainage all comes down from, um, from the road. Property. Um, I don't know if it's from the road. I haven't looked at that plan for quite some time. And, and I apologize. I probably should ask for better pictures because if there's if the drainage isn't coming in there and he's using the property, it depends how far. <clears throat> to me, it's just is the road safe or is it not? You're parking next to a road. You build it to standards. It's 24 with two feet dishes. We're letting him build right into the two feet ditches um, for parking because he doesn't have any. I feel his pain in a sense because he's commercial and um, he's doing doing great economic development for us, sir, Mr. Keck, but. I'm just not in, I, I just see an issue with the, the parking. Sure. So. Commissioner LaCroix, yeah. I, I definitely hear what you're saying, Deb, but this is a conditional use in, for the, the RV park, which is supposed to be used for housing for the employees. It's, it's, a, it's a use for that. One of the conditions on here is the parking is allowed within, I think now we're getting into the miners and the RV park and I think, you know, that needs to be revisited. As you were saying, I, I, I get that. But, but this item right here is for the RV park and working with that. And, and I believe all those parking spots on the right side are within the RV park footprint. But, I mean, that, that's what, what's on our, our table is, is a conditional use for the RV park. Yep. It's not the miners. Okay. Commissioner Lassner. So if we're really focusing on the RV park, then what is this other plan? Why is it attached to it? Because if we're, if we're making a determination for the RV park, is this part of the construction for the RV park? That would be my concern. Because if it is, I think maybe, I mean, if I owned a business and I realized it was very popular and I needed to have more parking space, I think I'd look at making my parking space within my area uh, pretty accessible and pretty close to the building rather than, you know, this is just my, you know, my thought process. If I own that, I wouldn't try to push them out along the edge of something that's already got steep sides. I'd, I'd look at, I mean, if it was me, I mean, I know, you know, trailer park, or, you know, RV park, you know, you get, you can make money off of it, things of that nature. But if I wanted my customers to come in, I think I'd look at putting my parking kind of in that area. So it's not potentially blocking the road or causing a problem, at least within the next year. Cause I mean, if you have a lot of issues with blocking traffic and stuff, you may have a lot of complaints. And if it's a CUP, it could be, you know, removed if there's enough complaints and justification for that. And I'm just looking out for you also as the property owner, trying to move forward with two different things here. Um, so yeah, that's just my concern is why is that tapped in here? Well, like I said, I think, whoops, excuse me, I think the eight, slots on the right side are part of the RV park. All these on the left side aren't. But it just is curious to me that the parking is pushed up there just as, to limit that 24 foot to exactly that when there is, you know, all the room you see that direction is Matt's land too. Mr. Stetson, who, I owns, be pushed back. who owns the land to the left where the parking is? So there's 66 feet 
who owns the left who owns the land rms he he owns the land so if he yeah. backs into it he's fine yep so it's more excavation would be required yeah. but he owns the land behind the parking mr keck does yes okay so if he does he's backing into his own land correct so why mr keck can i ask you a question So in, instead of building next to the road, why, if you own the land behind it, why didn't you build, build a parking lot behind it instead of right by the road? Um, because it is steep land. So if I could address a couple of issues that have come up. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Um, first and foremost, the purpose of this RV lot is for work campers. It is not for the public. So we can't exist without workers. Work campers are people that work seasonally in the south, come north in the winter, or come north in the summer and work for us. So this is strictly for employees of Prairie Berry. And if, um, it, it would not pencil out as a um, commercial uh, venture. Um, second point is that in around 2012 to 2014, uh, when we purchased this entire uh, area from multiple parties, uh, the county was just beginning its stormwater management plan. And so we got in at the very beginning of that. And so this entire property has been engineered and designed, and there is a stormwater management design book that has been completed for this property. And we have multiple retention ponds, and so this is one of the, probably the earliest properties in compliance with the Pennington County Stormwater Plan. Uh, so to address the drainage issue on the RV side, there will be culverts that will be put in, and then they will be tied into existing storm drains uh, that are already there. You can kind of see them, they're the white um, barricades are also in your handouts right here. So this is where existing storm drain um, inlets are. So the drainage is going, to, is going to tie into those inlets and go into the uh, already designed retention pond. So, so storm water has been designed into this for close to 10 years. Mr. Chair. Commissioner Oshkinak. So when you go down Main Street in Hill City, that's probably a 66 foot wide corridor. I mean, it's legally owned by the state of South Dakota, but you have parking on both sides. So I can see where you park in right of ways and easements. That's just what, uh, that's how they're designed. But, uh, and I can relate to the work camper because that's critical. But I still go back to item 19. If this is reviewed one year on a complaint basis, we had a problem, then we can always reconsider. This isn't a perpetual decision. Well, I think as Mr. Kick came to the Planning Commission, you know, uh, obviously there was a shortage of parking for the area. And he's trying to meet some of those needs, at least, uh, with this additional parking. And so the Planning Commission gave full support. I, I will say at the Planning Commission, we were told that we were in complete agreement with those that, that Matt at that time had mentioned to the planning agreement that we were in complete agreement with those parking spots being in that easement. And at that time, we were not. I, I don't, re I don't recall right. that being said, but I we were told, did, that, I, I we were told that by a, a staff member. Okay. I just said that I discussed the parking plan with the Stensons both uh, via email and in person. Well, Chairman, um, can I ask Mr. Keck? Sure. So, Mr. Keck, is that with the parking up there? That road right there? That's the parking up there where the road is yeah. right up here? To get into the, the drive goes to the, would be to the left of those concrete markers up there. So, you, where are you parking? Are you? Are you parking further back than that? You, if you were looking at that right now, you'd Stetson. be seeing cars Mr. all Stetson. along there. Facing Mr. Stanson, she's asking Mr. Let, let Mr. Keck answer. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you. So as you can see where the red car is, yes, sir. that is our existing parking lot uh, up to about where those barricades are. That's what's existing right now. And then beyond those barricades is the 24-foot roadway. And the problems we run into are people that 
are traveling with trailers. Um, and so they'll end up parking with a trailer, they'll park along the road. So it's not that we need parking for 75 cars, we need parking for 35 cars and 10 trailers or five trailers. So they park alongside the road. So our intention was to, because we don't want them parking along the road to block Stenson's access. So our intention was to uh, level as much as we could without um, leveling the hillside in order to provide additional parking. Further questions? I have a motion and a second. Further discussion? All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? No. no. Uh, motion is three to two. Motion carried. I, I, I will just make the statement that the CACs have been very good neighbors. So I don't want to indicate that this is a big issue with us for anything else. I mean, okay. Thank you, Mr. Sanson. Item I. All right, item I is a major plan unit development amendment, amendment PU 21-10, to amend the existing plan unit development to allow for an additional six mobile home sites on the subject property. The applicant is Rapid City MHP LLC. The agent is Clearwell PLLC. The site location is 4835 Sturgis Road. The property size is 21.49 acres. Access is off Sturgis Road, and there is a special floodplain on the property. Property history, all building permits have been obtained on the property. There are two on-site wastewater treatment systems and eight current operating permits. The request was routed for interdepartmental review and no major concerns were received. The applicant is applying to add six additional mobile home sites for placement of the, of the mobile homes. The applicant updated the on-site wastewater treatment system in October of 2020, which included two new systems that service 45 of the 61 lots. The remaining 16 lots will be serviced by an existing system that will be pumped and inspected prior to the issuance of any new building permits to ensure any repairs needed will be completed. The mobile home park is meeting the conditions of PU 06-07. Staff has not received any complaints regarding the requested use. On June 28th, the Planning Commission recommended approval with 21 conditions. Move approval with 21 conditions per staff recommendation. Thank you. Got a motion and a second by Commissioner Hadcock and Commissioner Lassiter. Uh, any item, any members of the public wish to address this? Any questions, comments by the commission? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Morning again, Commissioners. Jason Dennison, Assistant Planning Director. Agenda item J is layout plan 21-30 to combine three lots in order to create lot 7R2 of Forest View subdivision. The applicants are Ed and Tammy Davis. Site location is east of the intersection of Highway 385 and Highway 44 West. Uh, Total acreage of the properties once combined will be 1.7 acres. Currently zoned suburban residential district and rural residential district. Access is off Kinsley Drive. There is no special flood hazard area on the property. Uh, property history, there are three separate lots we're talking about here. The first lot is 0.34 acres, uh, contains a detached garage. Uh, the other property is 0.41 acres, contains a, another detached garage, and the, the uh, larger lot to the south is 0.95 acres, contains a single family residence as well as a tool shed and an on-site wastewater treatment system. The proposed lots will be combined to 1.7 acres, contain all the structures I just discussed, as well as the on-site wastewater treatment system. Interdepartment or the request was sent out for interdepartmental review. No objections or concerns were received. 
And with that, staff finds no significant issues with the applicant's request as it appears to be in harmony with existing lots and current land uses in the area. And Mr. staff Chair. recommends approval of layout plan LPL 21-30 with conditions. Move approval with Commission, staff. Commissioner yep. LaCroix. Sorry. Oh, I was just, yeah. No, move, go ahead, move to approve. No, okay. we could do. With nine conditions. Got a, we got a motion and a second <laughs> to approve. <laughs> yes, sir. Is there any members of the public wishing to address this? Seeing none, any further comments, questions by the commission? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion in the keeper saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Item K. Uh, Cosac Environmental Planner. Item K is layout plan LPL 21-31. It is to combine lots to create lot 14R of Diamond of Double Diamond Ranch subdivision. The applicant owner is Timothy Schwab. Uh, currently, the location of the property is 12746 Happy Trails. Access will be off Happy Trails, and the size of the two lots combined are 10.77 acres, and there is special flood hazard area, the 100-year flood plain on the property. Uh, currently on the two properties at 12746 Happy Trails, there is a single family residence and a studio with a bathroom, both of which have proper building permits, and there's an on-site wastewater treatment system. Uh, the second lot to the east is vacant of any structure and does not have an on-site wastewater treatment system. The proposed lot will be lot 14R and will contain <coughs> all the structures. Uh, this was routed around for your department review. There were no major comments or concerns were, that were received. Uh, for the purposes of the layout plan, staff finds no significant issues with the request as the request appears to be in harmony with the surrounding properties. So staff is recommending approval of layout plan LPL 21-31 with conditions. Move to approve. Second. Got a motion by Commissioner Lassiter, second by Commissioner LaCroix to approve. Is there any members of the public desiring to speak on this? Seeing none, back to the commission. Comments, questions? Hearing none, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. Motion uh, opposed. Motion carried. L. Morning again, Commissioners. Jason Thennison, Assistant Planning Director. Agenda item L is preliminary plat 21-32 to create lot B of Guy Davis Homestead. Applicant and landowner is David Stone. His surveyor is Bros Engineering. Other affected landowners are Davis Homestead Reserve LLC. Uh, site location is 2004, sorry, 2004 Wilsey Road. Uh, proposed uh, lot will be 40 acres. Current zoning is agriculture district and access will be via unimproved section line and 50 foot wide access easement. Board of Commissioners approved layout plan 21 23 on May 18th of 2021, and the applicant meets all conditions of approval. Property history, uh, talking about two uh, large parcels of property. Uh, the first one contains historical structures, uh, two of those, as well as an abandoned single wide mobile home, none of which are habitable, as well as a uh, non-functional filled in outhouse. The other property contains a hunting cabin placed in the 1980s per the applicant, as well as, um, sorry, there are no, there is no on-site wastewater treatment system for that cabin. The request was sent off for interdepartmental review and County Highway stated that any roads built along or within the section line shall be built to Ordinance 14 standards and no other concerns or objections were received. Staff's analysis of the request is that the Board of Commissioners did approve subdivision regulations variance 21-07 to waive the requirements to provide percolation tests and soil profile whole information to satisfy condition number five of layout plan 21-23 and subdivision regulations variance 21-08 was also approved to waive the requirement to dedicate and improve section line right of way and this satisfied condition number six of layout plan 21-23. With that, the applicant's request appears to be in harmony with existing lots and current land uses in the area and staff recommends approval of preliminary plat 21-32 with conditions. Chair. Any member? Okay, Commissioner LaCroix. Move for approval. Got a motion from Commissioner LaCroix. Is there a second? Second. Second from Commissioner Ross Connect. Are there any members of the public wishing to address this item? Seeing none, back to the commission for comments or questions. 
Hearing none, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Item M. Item M is preliminary plat 21-33 to subdivide one lot and create four lots. The applicant and landowner is Betty Johnson. Her agent is DC Scott Surveyors. The size of the property as assisted today is 14.14 acres. Current zoning is rural residential district. Access to all proposed lots is via Deegan Drive and there's no special flood hazard area on the property. As the property sits today, it does contain a single wide mobile home that is not habitable, placed in 1987, as well as an on-site wastewater treatment system. The applicant is working with a pumper to verify that that uh, system is functional. Proposed lots are on the right-hand side of your screen. Lot 1A will be 3.42 acres and vacant. Lot 1B will be 3.43 acres and vacant. Lot C will be three acres and vacant. And lastly, lot 1D will be 4.32 acres and contain the single wide mobile home and the on-site wastewater treatment system. The request was sent out for an interdepartmental review and no comments or concerns were received. Uh, the applicant has stated she plans to provide percolation tests and soil profile hole information for lots 1A, 1B, and 1C. With that, the applicant's request appears to be in harmony with existing lots and current land uses in the area, and staff recommends approval with conditions. Any members of the public wishing to address this one? Questions the commission has? Sure. <clears throat> Commissioner LaCroix. Move to approve preliminary plat 21-33 with seven conditions. Second. I've got a motion and a second. Further discussion? All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Item N. Agenda item N is rezone 21-04 to rezone from rural residential district to agriculture district. The applicant is Mike Semino, operating under Nicarly Properties, LLC. Site location is 23054 Mystic Road. Uh, property size is 24 acres, currently zoned rural residential district and agriculture district. It does contain 100 year special flood hazard area. The staff did analyze current zoning within one half mile and found agriculture district as well as open space. Future land use in the area is rural ranchette district and open space. The request was sent out for interdepartmental review and no concerns were noted. Staff's analysis of the request is that current zoning and future land use in the area identify several par parcels as agriculture district within one half mile of subject property to include a portion of the subject property. The applicant's request to rezone appears to be in harmony with current zoning, future land use, and the comprehensive plan. Approval of this request will remove dual zoning designations from the property and allow for agricultural uses. Therefore, staff recommends approval of rezone 21-04. Move to approve. Second. Got a motion by Commissioner Laster, second by Commissioner LaCroix, and members of the public wishing to address this item. Seeing none, back to the Commission for questions, comments. Hearing none, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Item O. Agenda item O is Comprehensive Plan Amendment 21-08 to amend the Comprehensive Plan to change future land use from Ranchette residential district to rural residential district. The applicant is Mike Gennaro operating under TDG Real Estate LLC. His agent is DC Scott Surveyors and staff recommends to continue uh, this agenda item to the August 3rd, 2021 Board of Commissioners meeting. The applicant did not uh, get his uh, mailings out in time. The applicant what? His mailings, his uh, property owner mailing list. He did not get that sent out in time. Okay. Is there a motion? Move to continue to August 3rd, 2021. Second. I'll second. Any further comments, questions? All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Item P. Agenda item P is rezone 21-14 to rezone from agriculture district to rural residential district. Mike, the applicant is Mike Gennaro operating under TDG Real Estate LLC. His agent is DC Scott Surveyors. And again, the uh, staff recommends to continue rezone 21-14 to the August 3rd, 2021 Board of Commissioners. There a motion. Move to continue to the August 3rd Board of Commissioners meeting. Second. Uh, motion and a second. Further discussion? Is this, oh. Chairman? Yes. Is this the one that you said it's just for 
one resident, maybe a son later? No. That was a different one? I don't believe that. I don't believe so. No. no? Was that you, sir? No. No? Separate property. Oh. All those in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Item Q. Agenda item Q is comprehensive plan amendment 21-10 to amend the comprehensive plan to change future land use from ranchette district to rural residential district. The applicant is Lyndon Bolt, operating under GL Development Company, LLC. His agent is Renner Associates, LLC. Site location is 12807 Old Hill City Road. Total uh, requested acreage for this uh, comprehensive plan amendment is 29.5 acres. Currently zoned agriculture district. Staff did evaluate future land use within one half mile and found open space, ranchette residential, rural residential, as well as planned unit development districts. The request was sent out for interdepartmental review and no concerns were noted. Staff's analysis is that future land use within one half mile of the subject property identifies several parcels as rural residential district. The request to amend the comprehensive plan appears to be in harmony with future land use designations in the area. On June 1st, 2021, the Board of Commissioners approved preliminary plat 21-24. Approval of this request will satisfy number number six of that uh, that request and allow the planning process to continue. With that, staff recommends approval of comprehensive plan amendment 21-10. Move to approve. Got a motion. Is there a second? Second. And a second by Commissioner Ross Connect. Chairman. Uh, no further discussion. Any members of the public wishing to address this? Back to the commission. Chairman. Commissioner Atko. So this is the point we made with the old city, old Hill City Road mm -hmm. and all the uh, development that's going to go on out there. Um, Jason, on based on planning um, and based on road and based on infrastructure, um, did we ever do maybe an analysis of how much development can go in that area before water and septic and other things and drainage was going to have issues in this area, let alone the road for this much development. Did we ever take that in consideration? I believe there are existing, uh, there is an existing on-site wastewater treatment system on one of the properties. And I think that they have waived percolation and profile hole requirements because they don't know exactly where the structure is going to go out there. Okay. So this was the one that was supposed to have one structure, maybe in a sun later. No, 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 ma'am. Didn't we waive the percolation test because of that? Because we didn't know where the house was going to go. Well, that was uh, further towards Hill City. That was Mr. Grover. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm Mr. just. Chair. I'll just keep saying your infrastructure for this area and this old Hill City Road is only going to take so much infrastructure, and then um, water sewer issues are going to come up, and this road is not going to be able to retain at this size, the development that we are putting on it. Just keep saying that every time we approve another development on this road. How many lots is that? Two, four, six, seven more lots? And did you see the lots that are on there? Uh, there were three lots and he took three lots, or actually I think there was four lots and he just reconsolidated them. So you're only gonna net about three, but I just wanna say our, we had our first road committee last week or the week before and these are things that we're going to be looking at in the future so yeah i uh, just just sooner than later if we could guys before we overload roads or uh, conditions and areas that um, again i don't know how much water you can suck out of an area before there's not enough water maybe there isn't a, a, a level I'm, I'm not really familiar with wells and all that but how much water can you take out of an area before there's not enough I don't know, does water pressure, fire flow go down because of how many wells? I mean, all that kind of stuff. We have that in the city. There's got to be something that um, we're thinking about for um, future of Pennington County as well, because we're doing what maybe we were talking, or I was talking with the city. When we have so much infrastructure to support so much development. And so if we just keep letting people put all kinds of development in, the, in these areas, how much can that support? Um, be a question before we keep uh, approving all these developments, if it's okay to look into that beforehand, just food for that. 
Mr. Chair. Commissioner Roskin. My question is, is we don't really have any jurisdiction on wells. They have to get the permit through the state, and the state's the one that determines who has the junior water rights and who has their senior water rights. And if somebody drills a well and they get junior, they it's my understanding they're, they're going to have to find another source of water. Correct. But that's not up to the county to make that decision, if I understand that right. That's right. And then to, as far as the septic systems, those are those lots are small enough where they have to do the perk test and they have to do the soil profile. And if those tests aren't adequate enough, then they got to do a, a different system. It might have to be a holding system. But uh, I, under no way, I, I don't think the county is going to approve something that would be you know, detrimental to the integrity of the water source or neighboring properties. That's correct. Any members of the public wishing to address this? Seeing none. Oh, come forward. State doesn't care. Marilyn Bolt, Lyndon Bolt's mother, and Greg Bolt's wife. And there's already wells installed on those four lots, possibly five of those lots that were approved by the state. Thank you, um, Chairman. Commissioner Adcock. I'm not in disagreement with your development personally. I'm just um, trying to say how much um, water do we have to support an area in that whole area, not, not just yours. So I'm not in agreement with your lots, but on that whole road, I mean, and if the water shortage just goes down and then septic, how much septic do you want in an area? And how's the drainage in that area? And the road at this point is not that wide a road for not, not just your, this isn't for just you, ma'am, it's for that whole area that's getting developed. The state does run the water um, in those areas. Um, but a lot of times, are they regulating how much we're doing and do they know how much um, development is in that area and do they care? for how much water is going up, going out. Excuse and, uh, me, ma'am, yes, but I would b agree with Mr. Rosconeck, but that is a state issue, not a county issue. Yes, ma'am, but if we, we don't have water, it will be Pennington County's issue, or if you guys have water pressure. If they flow. already approve them is what I'm asking you. Yeah. Because they already approved for the wells. Yes, ma'am, I'm not in disagreement with your, your development and your stuff, I'm saying in general. Um, I don't think people are worried about the water or the sewer issues in this area or the road until it happens. That's usually what happens, and then later um, it's too late. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bull. Any further comments, questions? I have a motion in a second. Uh, all those in favor, indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Item R. Agenda item R is rezone 21-15 to rezone to a rural residential district. The applicant is Lyndon Bolt, operating under GL Development Company, LLC. His agent is Renner Associates, LLC. Location is 12807 Old Hill City Road, 29.5 acres. Currently zoned agriculture district. Existing land use is residential. Staff did evaluate current zoning within one half mile found open space agriculture ranchette rural residential and planned unit development districts also evaluated future land use within one half mile and found open space ranchette residential rural residential and planned unit development districts the request was sent out for interdepartmental review and no concerns were noted staff's analysis is that current zoning within one half mile of the subject property identifies several parcels as rural residential district with that, the request to rezone appears to be in harmony with the current zoning, future land use designations, and the comprehensive plan. Move to approve. recommends approval. Rezone 21-15. Got a motion. Is there a second? Second. And a second from Commissioner LaCroix. Uh, any public comment relative to this? Back to the commission. Comments, questions? Hearing none, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Item S. Agenda item S is preliminary plat 21-39 to subdivide, subdivide and create Rudd Tract. The applicant and landowners are Elvin and Lois Rudd. Other affected landowners are Stanley and Marvin Negebauer. Their agent is Anderson Engineers. The site location is on 
near Highway 79 and Dauphin Bow Road. The current zoning is Agriculture District. Access is off Dauphin Bow Road. Uh, we're talking about two separate lots here. On the left hand side of the screen, lot A is 289 acres and is vacant of any structures or utilities. Lot B is 10 acres, contains a single family residence as well as an on site wastewater treatment system. The proposed lot is on the right hand side of your screen. It will become 40.6 acres and contains a single family residence as well as the on site wastewater treatment system. The request was sent out for interdepartmental review. There were no objections received. Uh, the board has seen this before and approved layout plan 21-18 on May 18th of this year. And the applicant has satisfied all but one condition of that being that prior to the mylar being filed with the register of deeds, the section lines on both proposed rud, on proposed rud tract must be dedicated and approved or an approved subdivision regulations be a, regulations variance be obtained. The applicant has submitted an application for that variance and with that, staff recommends approval with conditions. Any public comment? <coughs> Commissioner LaCroix. Move for approval. Got a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Laster. For the comments? All those in favor and to keep it saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Item T. Item T is layout plan 21-41 to subdivide and create lots two through 11 of Sudbury Ranch subdivision. The la landowner and applicant is Sudbury Ranch Holdings, LLC. Casey Skyberg is the agent. Uh, his surveyor is Dana Foreman of KLJ. The location is approximately a quarter mile south of Neck Yoke Road at the end of Sudbury Ranch Road. As the property sits today, it's 102 acres. Currently zoned agriculture district. Access is off Sudbury Ranch Road and a proposed unnamed right of way. There's no special flood hazard area on the property. As they sit today, uh, both properties are vacant of any structures or utilities. See the uh, proposed lots here on the right hand side of your screen. All but uh, one of the lots being lot three will be 10 acres. Lot three itself would be 0.254 acres and it's a proposed well lot. The request was sent out for interdepartmental review and the Register of Deeds did have a comment stating that lot two is already planted and will need to have a unique designation such as lot two R or lot two revised. No other comments or concerns were received. Staff's analysis of the request is that the applicant's request appears to be in harmony with existing lots and current land uses in the area and staff recommends approval with conditions. Jason, I'm sorry, I missed, what lot is designated for a well lot? Uh, lot three, this uh, smaller lot here towards the bottom. Oh, I see, okay. Right, yeah, the rest okay. of the lots will be uh, just over 10 acres each. Okay, okay. Any members of the public wishing to address this item? Back to the commission. Mr. Chair. Commissioner Lictor. Move to approve. Got a motion. Is there a second? Second. Motion and a second. For the discussion. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Item U. <clears throat> uh, Coach Sack, Environmental Planner. Item U is rezone RZ 21-16. It is to rezone one acre from rural residential district to low density residential district. The applicant and owner is Keith uh, Lau. Uh, surveyors, DC Scott Surveyors, location of the property is 23033 High Sega Road. Uh, the current size of the property that's being rezoned is one acre. Uh, staff is going to actually recommend to continue uh, rezone RG 21-16 to the July 20th, uh, 2021 Board of Commissioners meeting to allow uh, the applicant's comprehensive plan amendment to be heard. Is there a motion? Let's move to continue. Second. Got a motion and a second. Commissioner Laster and Commissioner LaCroix. All those in favor for a continuation? Indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Item V. 
Uh, item V is preliminary plat PPL 21-38. It is to subdivide and create tracks one and two in well lot of Palicki subdivision. The landowner and applicant is Catherine Palicki. The surveyor is baseline surveying. Location of the property is 23072 Hysega Road. Access will be off Hysega Road. There is no special flood hazard area on the property. And currently the property sits at 30.15 acres in the zoned rural residential district. Currently on the property, there is a single family residence with four accessory structures, all of which have proper building permits. There are two on-site wastewater treatment systems located on the property as well. For the proposed lot, uh, tract one uh, will be 23.85 acres and will contain all the structures and the septic systems that were listed above. Tract two will be 6.12 acres. There will be vacant of any structures and the well lot will be 0 0.2 acres. This was right around for a new department review. Uh, no major comments or concerns were received. On May 18, 2021, the Board of Commissioners approved layout plan LPL 2121 with conditions. Uh, the board waived earlier in this meeting uh, the percolation test and profile information and they were, there will be a variance on uh, July 20th uh, to waive the improvement and dedication for the section line. For the purposes of the preliminary plat, staff finds no significant issues with the applicant's request as it appears to be in harmony with existing lots. So staff is recommending approval of preliminary plat PPL 21-38 with conditions. Move to approve preliminary plat PPL 21-38 with six motion. conditions. Take it. And a second. Uh, any members of the public wishing to address this? Not. Back to the commission. Any further comments? All those in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Item W is Comprehensive Plan Amendment CA 21-11. It is to amend the Comprehensive Plan to change the future land use from rural residential district to low density residential district. The applicant and landowner is Thomas Berry. Uh, the surveyor is Britain Engineering. Uh, the location of the property is 22879 Pine Meadows Court. Access will be off Pine Meadows Court, and there is a special flood hazard area on the property. Other, it's a 100-year floodplain. And currently, the two properties equal out to be 2.35 acres. When doing a comprehensive plan amendment, we look at the future land use within a half mile. There is open space, ranchette residential, rural residential, uh, planned unit development, and highway service. Uh, this was right on for your department review. The request, uh, there is no major comments or concerns were noted. The request does, to be, does appear to be in harmony with the abutting uh, future land use and designations in the area. There is also a suburban residential district in the, in the half mile as well. Uh, the request is in harmony with the surrounding and abutting future land use and designations area. The applicant has requested a rezoning comprehensive amendment, amendment to continue the planning process. The LPL 21-19 was approved on May 18, 2021. And with that, staff is recommending approval of comprehensive plan amendment CA 21-11. Anyone from the public wishing to address this? Or none, back to the commission. Mr. Chair. Commissioner <coughs> LaCroix. Move for approval. Second. Got a motion and a second. For the comments, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Item X. Item X is rezone RZ 21-18. It is to rezone 2.35 acres from rural residential district to low density residential district. The applicant is Thomas Berry, the surveyor is Britain Engineering. Uh, the location of the property is 22879 Pound Meadows Court and the, uh, the lots here are 2.35 acres. When looking at a rezone, we look at current zoning within a half mile. There is suburban residential district, rural residential district, highway service district, plan unit development, and op open space and agriculture district. This was routed around for inter department review. There were no major comments or concerns were received. Uh, current zoning and future land use in the area identifies several parcels in the area as suburban residential district within a half mile of the property. Low density residential district requires a half acre lot size or larger, while suburban residential uh, requires <laughs> 6,500 square feet. Therefore, the applicant's request uh, to rezone appears to be in harmony with the current zoning in the area, and staff is recommending approval of rezone 21 18 with conditions. Any, any members of the public wishing to address this? Seeing none, back to the commission. Move to approve. Got a motion by Commissioner Laster, second by. Correct. 
Lacroix. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Why? Agenda item Y is minor plat MPL 21-37, the landowner's Thomas, oh, sorry, sorry. It's to reconfigure lot lines to create lot 6R and 7R of Pine Meadow subdivision. The applicant and landowner's Thomas Berry. The surveyor is Britain Engineering. The location of the property is 22879 Pine Meadows Court. There is a 100 year uh, floodplain on the property and access is off Pine Meadows Court. The platting involves 2.35 acres and current zoning is rural residential district. Uh, currently on the property at 22879 uh, Pine Meadows Court, there's a single family residence, a residential addition, a guest cottage and a tool shed, all of which have proper building permits. Uh, lot seven will be vacant of any, is a vacant of any structures. For proposed lot, proposed lot 6R will be 0 0.965 acres and will be vacant of any structure. Lot 7R will be 1.405 acres and will contain all the structures listed above. This was right around for an department review. There were no major comments or concerns or, that were received. On May 18th, 2021, the Board of Commissioners approved layout plan LPL 21-19 with conditions. Uh, staff finds no significant issues with the applicant's request as it appears to be in harmony with the existing lots and current land uses within the area. So staff is recommending approval of minor plat uh, MPL 21-37 with conditions. Everybody in the public question to speak to this item. Seeing none, back to the commission. Move for Commissioner approval. Commissioner LaCroix. Who's the second? Second. And a second by Commissioner Laster. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Item Z. Item Z is Comprehensive Plan Amendment CA 21-12. It is to amend the Comprehensive Plan to change the future land use from rural residential district to suburban residential district. The applicant is Ty Pullman. The agent is FMG Engineering and the owner is Prairie Acres General LLC. Uh, the property is located near uh, 1980 Country Road. It is 40 acres and access will be off of Country Road. When looking at a comprehensive plan amendment, we look at future land use within a half mile. There is suburban residential district within a half mile, rural residential district, general commercial district, light industrial district, and heavy industrial district. This was right around for interdepartment review. Uh, there were no major comments or concerns that were received. Uh, the request does appear to be in harmony with surrounding and abutting future land use designations in the comprehensive plan as there is suburban residential district that abuts the property. Uh, the applicant has requested the rezone and comprehensive plan amendment to expand the, uh, an existing mobile home park. Uh, so staff is recommending approval of conditional or comprehensive plan amendment 21-12. Any public comment? Back to the commission. Mr. Chair. Commissioner LaCroix. Move to approve. Is there a second? Second. And a second. For the discussion. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Double A. Agenda item AA is rezone RZ21-19. It is to rezone 40 acres from agricultural district to suburban residential district. The applicant is Ty Pullman. The agent is FMG Engineering. And the owner is Prairie Acres General LLC. And it involves 40 acres. Uh, currently, uh, the current zoning within a half mile, there is suburban residential district, general commercial district, agriculture district. Uh, this was right around for an department review. There were no major comments or concerns that were received. Uh, the current zoning and future land use in the area identify several parcels of suburban residential district within a half mile of the property. Therefore, the applicant's request to rezone appears to be in harmony with the current uh, zoning in the area. So staff is recommending approval of rezone 21-19. Uh, Mr. Chair. Commissioner Oskinar. Move to approve rezone 21-19. Second. Got a motion and a second. Uh, any public comment? Seeing none. Any comments by the uh, commission? Seeing none, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Okay. Agenda item BB is mining permit MP21-01. It is to expand the existing Creston sand and gravel mine to include mining operations for sand and gravel and reclamation activities. The applicant is Pete Lean and Sons Incorporated. They do have a representative here if there are any questions. And the landowner is Cheyenne River Ranch, LLC. 
Uh, the location of the property is approximately 14 miles southeast of Farmingdale along East Highway 44. There is a 100-year floodplain on the property, and the size of the acreage is approximately 2,305. The applicants have submitted an operation plan, a reclamation plan. They do have a current South Dakota um, Department of Agriculture and Natural Resources mine license, and it does. And the site does appear to meet uh, Section 320H of the Pennington County Zoning Ordinance. Uh, the property involves 14 parcels. Uh, the property is vacant land. This was right around for your apartment review. There were no major comments or concerns that were received. Uh, 9,200,000 cubic yards of sand and gravel is expected to be excavated. Uh, expansion is set to begin in 2022 with an approximate mine, li mine life of 80 years. The current mine license is 83-100. Uh, hall roads include an access easement and U.S. Highway 44. They use best management practices ex uh, such as sediment basins, wattles, rock check dams, diversions, or, and other uh, appropriate engineered stormwater controls as needed. And there will be a 125 foot buffer between the Cheyenne River and Rabbit Creek of all mining operations. This was heard before the Planning Commission on June 28, 2021, where they did recommend approval. Uh, so staff is recommending approval of mining permit MP21-01 with conditions. Mr. Chairman. Commissioner Lassner. I have a question for you, sir. You were on the Planning Commission whenever this was heard. I, was. Well, I know that I've been contacted with some concerns about um, some of the mining for this particular um, piece, the ones that are going to come close to the highway and the Cheyenne River. What was the, did they show up to that meeting and what were their concerns and were they addressed? There, there was a concern expressed and there's, uh, is anybody here, uh, I know that we have Pete Lean and Sons here representing, anybody else here relative to this issue? I, I might ask, would you mind coming up in addressing that because she did a good job of addressing the concerns that were expressed at the planning commission level. So, Danielle, hi, Danielle Weber's Pete Lean and Sons. Um, I did talk. James Bond Maud was the neighbor that contacted us and that came to the meeting as well, and he did have concerns about um, how close we would mine to the road because as it's drawn, it outlines the entire parcel within Ordinance 320 also, there are restrictions on how close you can mine to a right of way. So that would put us a 25 foot setback outside of that right away. So I talked to James quite a bit after the meeting and I think we resolved his concerns and we're gonna go out and take a closer look at some of his properties too. Okay. Does that answer your question? Yep, I just had one major concern and that was it. So I just wanted to see if it got passed, you know, how it was addressed and it seems like it was, so. Yeah, Daniel, I appreciate that. Okay. Any, uh, is, is there a motion? Mr. Chair. Commissioner LaCroix. Move to approve. Second. Mining uh, permit 2101. I've got a motion and a second to approve for the discussion. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Item CC. Good morning or afternoon again. Item CC is Major Plan Unit Development Amendment PU 21-07 to remove the subject property approximately 30 acres from the plan unit development. Uh, the property is located at 23165 Horseman Ranch Road. Uh, it is within a plan unit development. It was previously used as a bed and breakfast and now it's currently being used as a residence. And that is why they want to remove this from the planned unit development. So staff is recommending approval of removing this uh, 30 acre portion from plan unit development PU 9712. Move to approve. I've got a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. And a second from Commissioner LaCroix. Uh, I think all we have is staff left, so not going to ask about public comment. Uh, any further discussion by the commission? All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Item double D. DD is Comprehensive Plan Amendment CA 21-06 to amend the Comprehensive plan, plan to change the future land use from Plan Unit Development District to Ranchette Residential District. The applicant and landowner is Nothing Doing LLC. Danny Davis is the agent. This property is located at 23165 Horseman Ranch Road. Consists of 30 acres. Uh, currently, or it previously was being used as a bed and breakfast and now they want to use this property as a residential district. Uh, when reviewing criteria, 
Uh, for comprehensive plan amendments, we look at future land use within a half a mile. There is forest service land, ranch at residential, rural residential, and plan unit development. Uh, this request is in harmony with the surrounding and abutting future land use designations and the comprehensive plan. The applicant has requested this rezone, uh, uh, has requested a rezone and plan unit development amendment um, as a primary structure on the property is no longer being used as a bed and breakfast. So staff is recommending approval of comprehensive plan amendment CA 21-06. Move to approve. Second. I've got a motion and a second to approve. Is there any members of the public wishing to address this item? Hearing none, uh, back to the commission. Comments, questions? Got a motion. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Motion carried. E -E. E -E. Item EE -E is rezone RZ21-13 to rezone 30 acres from Plan Unit Development District to Ranch at Residential District. The applicant landowner is Nothing Doing LLC. Danny Davis is the agent. The property is located at 23165 Horseman Ranch Road and consists of 30 acres. Um, it was used as a bed and breakfast and now as a residence. Uh, staff is recommending approval of this rezone as it is, the request is in harmony with the surrounding abutting future land use designations and comprehensive plan. Mr. Chair. Commissioner Roskinek. Move to approve. Rezone 21-13. Is there a second? Second. Commissioner LaCroix. Any item, any members of the public wishing to address this? Seeing none, back to the commission. Comments, questions? All those in favor of the motion indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Item FF. Item FF is rezone RZ21-17 to rezone 24.56 acres from Agriculture District to Suburban Residential District. The applicant and owner is Pink Cabin LLC. The surveyor is KTM Design Solutions. Uh, the property consists of 24.56 acres. It's relatively flat. Its current zoning is agriculture. Uh, the future land use in this area is Suburban Residential District. Um, it is vacant of any um, structures at this time. Uh, the applicant has requested this rezone in order to allow future platting of residential lots in the Murphy Ranch subdivision. And the request is in harmony with the surrounding and abutting current zoning future land use designations and comprehensive plan. So staff is recommending approval of rezone RZ21-17. Any, any members of the public wishing to address this? Commissioner LaCroix. Move for approval. I've got a motion. Is there a second? Second. And a second by Commissioner Ross Connect. Chairman. Commissioner Adcock. Isn't Murphy Ranch, is that the area with the water that they were supposed to build? Um, some kind of holding tank or a 30 gallon, or is that the area where we had people coming in to put um, fire sprinklers and stuff, that area? No, this is just east of Reservoir Road, um, and they're being served by the Rapid Valley Sanitary District. And I just talked to Travis, and they have tons of, yes, okay. They get good water up there. For some reason, I'm confusing Rushmore Ranch area with Murphy Ranch. Murphy Ranch, <laughs> yes. <laughs> opposite Too many, ends. <laughs> many, yes, definitely opposite ends. But and I questions? also know about the water because Travis informed me about the district, so... They are doing well, actually, with their lots. Further questions, comments? All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Item GG. Item GG is layout plan LPL 21-40 to subdivide and create lots 1 through 11 of the South Caputa edition. The landowner is H&H &H Land Company number 2 LLC. The agent is Brian Hammerbeck and he is in the audience. Uh, the property is located off of St. Germain Road and consists of 38.7 acres. The future land use in this area is rural residential which allows the 3 acre lot sizes. The existing land use is agriculture. Uh, this was routed around through the Interdepartmental Review process. Uh, there was uh, just a couple items from the Highway Department that they don't have records for a couple of the existing approaches, and they would like permits for those approaches. Uh, the Register of Deeds um, had some flat heading changes. There is some special flood hazard area on this property. Uh, the West River Electric uh, was, is going to require at least eight foot easement along the interior lot lines, and emergency services would like 
um, had recommended that a portion of the easement that is along the north side that runs parallel to Highway 40 be named. Um, this request is in harmony with the existing lots and in, in current land uses and the comprehensive plan, and staff is recommending approval with conditions. Brian, do you want to add anything to this or are here to answer questions? Oh, I think he's out. That's not, not Brian. Here. No, he was Brian, he's out on the side of his okay. head. But he's here. I guess he's not. He was here. He was here. <laughs> any, any other people <laughs> to address this? You could be Brian. Commissioner <laughs> LaCroix. I'd make the motion to move for approved layout plat 21-40 with 18 conditions. Second. Got a motion and a second to approve. Uh, for the discussion, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. Approved. Opposed? Motion carried. HH. Item HH is layout plan LPL 21 35 to create lots 1 through 21 of block 7, lots 8 through 16 of block 8, and lots 9 through 17 of block 9 of Sunset Ranch subdivision. The applicant and owner is JKRK Properties LLC, Laredo Holdings LLC, and Ryan Kasky. The surveyor engineer is Long Branch Civil Engineering. Uh, the current size of this property is 383.42 acres. It is located in the Sunset Ranch Plan Unit Development District. Uh, the further platting of this uh, subdivision will fulfill the re remainder of this planned unit development. It is located off of Gateway Drive and 229th Street. Uh, this was routed around through the interdepartmental review process and there were no items of concern that came back uh, with the exception of County Highway. They had some concerns about the lot configurations and the location of the section line right of way. Um, however, the applicant's request appears to be in harmony with the existing lots and current land uses in the area, and it will be the full build out of this plan unit development. Um, staff did uh, was contacted this morning by the um, applicant surveyor, and he had requested um, on the approved recommendations from the Planning Commission on conditions 13 and 14 um, that they read that prior to county board approval of the final plat instead of the preliminary plat, surety be posted for construction of roads. And on 14, that prior to the county board approval of the final plat in lieu of the preliminary plat, that surety be posted for installation of utilities. So staff is in agreement with those changes to those recommendations and is uh, recommending approval. Joe, anything you want to address on this? This one? Uh, yeah, so on this one, the <clears throat> section line 156 is a, a well-established road, um, and I haven't been out there for quite some time to see what is to the south of this, but it seems foolish to have a section line run right through the center of a, uh, of a lot here. It's just begging for somebody to, to vacate the section line in the future when you could very easily adjust your lot lines here of these bottom lots and get the section line on a lot line. Um, it's just this area, it, you know, with all these ranchettes going on out here, I don't know who owns the property to the south here. I did put that as a condition. So Brittany does have it as a condition. And then the other one, uh, <clears throat> I was out with Mark. Joe, probably a year or so ago, and there was an approach permit right here on the other side of the road that the, the site distance was just, we had to move it up the hill or down the hill so it met the site distance. So this road coming out here is not in a, in a good spot either. So, Chairman. Oh, one second. Yeah. So tell me again on the, on the, where was that site? Right through that section line. Talking right about there, the I don't know what the name of that road was. Um, I think I was out there. On I that. can see it on here. So it looks like Brittany has addressed, put both of those as conditions in her. Uh, both of those are in? Yes, yeah, says condition 23, 
condition 23 states that the site distance yep. concerns are addressed by the applicant for proposed lots 8 and 9 of block 8 and proposed lots 19, 20, 21 of block 7, and that the applicant works with the county highway department to mitigate concerns. Okay. That's number 23. And then number 25 was that the lot line for lots 10 and 11 in block 7 line up with the section line, as this will prevent potential issues if 156 mm -hmm. Avenue is improved to the south. Okay. As long as those conditions are in there and approved, I don't, you know, I don't foresee highway having any issues. So, okay, thank so, you. So, Commissioner Hancock. So, Joe or Brittany, they can come back and vacate the section line because they wouldn't make a, they wouldn't make a development with a section line in it with lots right through the middle of it. So, um, do they know? I guess Brittany was it told that that's a section line, sixty-six foot, and those lots would be unusable. Unless they vacated it? Um, that's why we put that condition in there, that they um, line up the lot lines. So they'll have to shift. So that section line will become an exterior lot line. Just like and there's plenty of their 10-acre lot sizes. So even with a 33-foot and then the 58-foot setback, they should be able to meet the setbacks for any structures that they put on those properties. So I'll ask again for sewer and water. I know we're not supposed to worry about it in a sense, but um, that's a lot of lots. Travis, do you know this area good enough? What is it served by? Well, it's Sunset Water District, I believe, and I talked to them because I've talked to them concerning the uh, PFOS PFO and some of the stuff that they're working with there. And, yes, it, they seem to be um, aware of the, the amount of lots that are going in and that they can service them. Cool. And then the, the sewer is... The sewer, I'm not familiar unless they're connecting to New Underwood sewer. I was only, I only was able to get a hold of the one individual, primarily because of the the the, the PFOS PFOA stuff out in the area, because the Sunset Water District is is part of the plan to connect certain individuals to that water district, so um, they know what their water limitations so are. So they've seen this layout plan. Uh, as far as I knew, they did. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chair, Commissioner Ruskin. I think this is one of the reasons we got to be looking at Missouri water in <laughs> yes. the future because wells aren't going to keep up forever. What'd you say? <laughs> need to be looking at Missouri water. I think that's what I said. Mr. Chair, Commissioner LaCroix. Move for approval. Second. Second. I've got a motion and a second to approve 21-35. Uh, uh, anybody in the audience wishing to address this? If not, back to the commission, comments, questions? If not, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Aye, aye. Item II is the Ordinance Amendment OA 21-10 for Pennington County to amend Section 400 Nonconforming Building Structures and Uses of Land to amend and supersede the existing Section 400 Nonconforming Building Structures and structures and uses of land of the Pennington County Zoning Ordinance. Um, the reason for this is to update the section to conform to current statutes and the effective date of relevant sections of the Pennington County Zoning Ordinance. Um, in the current section 400, it has a um, kind of a one-size-fit-all date of February 1994 when our original ordinance was adopted. Um, it was amended because each section, as we're amending each sections, those will be the effective dates um, for essentially grandfathering. So it'll be section-dependent and not the overall ordinance. Um, so we address that um, in B1, where it says continuation of non-conforming uses subject to the provisions of this article, the lawful use of a premise existing immediately prior to the effective date of the relevant zoning ordinance may be continued. Um, um, approval of I.I. and J.J. <laughs> I've got a motion by Commissioner Hadcock. Is there a second? Second. And a second by Commissioner Lassiter to approve ordinance amendment OA 21-10. So that, discussion. that was for I.I. and J.J. <laughs> Anyone here to address this item? All those in favor of the motion indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. J.J. Item J.J. is Ordinance Amendment OA 21-11 for Pennington County to repeal Section 502, Planning and Zoning Director. Section 503, Pennington County Planning and Zoning Commission. Section 504, Pennington County Zoning Board of Adjustment. 
um, and Section 505 pending to County Board of Commissioners. Uh, the reason for these is because all of this information is in other sections of our zoning ordinance and actually some of the appeal procedures and um, information is incorrect in these sections. So they're going to be addressed in the definitions and under the appropriate sections, whether it be conditional use permits or variances. So we just want to repeal these four sections. Move approval. <laughs> Got a motion to approve. Is there a second? Thanks, Brittany. Oh, you're hard second with the follow-up? No. Second by Commissioner Lasseter. Commissioner <laughs> Lasseter. Uh, Brittany, quick question for you on that. On Section 401, the intent, that first paragraph, what does that, unless it is agriculture use of 40 or more acres being removed, what does that impact? You are... Oh, it doesn't impact me. Um, under which one? You're on 401? Yeah, it's on page one of two. It's section 401 intent. And that very first paragraph at the very end, you're removing unless ag. What, what kind of prompted that? Because you said this was based on updates. Um, oh, because it was saying that you could have, no matter if you had an ag structure um, on more than 40 acres, you could continue that forever, even if the ordinance changes. Gotcha. Okay. All right. Thank you. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Chichima. Item KK. And are Joan, KK do we have uh, <laughs> Tina Roberts on Zoom? Yes, she has a meeting okay. to attend, so she has to disconnect it. Okay. Okay. Um, Chutima Sabbon Planning Department agenda item KK is a re, uh, re, request to refund conditional use permit penalty fee of $300. The applicant landowner is called SDLLC Tina Roberts. The previous staff, the previous planning staff sent an email to the applicant regarding the required documentation to transfer conditional use permit CU 1717 to operate a vacation home rental on the property. The applicant was unable to provide any proof of correspondence or documentation showing that she submitted the paperwork to transfer the conditional use permit. Staff recommends denial of the refund request. Chair. Commissioner LaCroix. So she just contacted you and said she, she couldn't attend to because she has a meeting. I mean, this, yes, she was on the over. phone since ten thirty okay. until about ten minutes ago, and she emailed me that um, she has to disconnect it because she has a meeting, another meeting to attend at twelve thirty. Can we continue so, this? I I think so. We had an extra long meeting today, so I think they probably hung out. So I would probably recommend to to continue this to our next meeting, and then you, you contact her and let her know. Okay. Yeah. Got a motion and a second. Further discussion? All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Committee reports. Do you guys need some help? Commission. Gary in the back? What? Those folks need help? Uh, I don't know. Folks, do you need help? Were you help? here to address something before they come in? Oh, okay. I just thought okay. we missed him. <laughs> Committee reports. Uh -oh. Commission. Huh? huh? Commission members. Am I may? Oh. <laughs> it must be at the bottom of the page. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> commission member. Items from the chair and the commission members. Mr. Chairman, I've got something, if you don't mind. Yes. I was hoping to have a letter for all year to preview and have Holly review and have it for us this time around, but my computer crashed, so unfortunately I don't have that. But it is basically a summary of the request to the Air Force Base for the uh, establishment of the Restoration Advisory Board. So hopefully this week I'll get that finalized after I get my computer um, recovered and go from there and send it forward so that we can look at it. So hopefully it'll be on the agenda next meeting so we can make a decision on that. Restoration advisory, advisory board, board for the uh, PFOS, PFO water contamination um, issues out there from the base following the uh, Box Elder or the Rapid Creek all the way out in, or Box Elder Creek all the way out to the Cheyenne. That's it for me. 
Other reports? Chairman, I'll be Size heading. committee reports. I'll be heading to um, Colorado with our planning department next week for some of the rules and regulations on marijuana. So that'll be actually very interesting. So good. I'll bring back a report. Good. Mr. Chair, sure. positive, you know, for that for a long Played time. Some gummy afterwards. worms and come to the Br meeting. Brittany said, <laughs> Brittany said she was going to bring back some good stuff. So. <laughs> Boyd, I think you're going to be gone. Uh yeah, I be, me and Holly would be gone into Washington for the NACO National Conference and elections and so forth. So we'll be going back and report <sighs> for that. Uh, some of the other stuff that I've been doing this weekend was as I uh, was asked to, to join uh, some Lakota leaders and leaders of, uh, of Rapid to voice uh, make a plea for a calm protest. What? On, on Saturday. So, what? Did, or Sunday, did that. Lloyd, I didn't hear you. I'm sorry. I was requested to, to join a group of Lakota leaders and our community leaders to ask for uh, a peaceful oh, protest this weekend. Said, and we sorry. did that at noon on, on Sunday. And that was, uh, it was good. We had some good people there and voiced their concerns. Um, but I also attended the, the collective healing meeting two week, a week before that when I heard about what, what the protest that was going on. Um, met with, I don't know, everything's running together for me right now. <laughs> <laughs> it has been, I mean, uh, between meetings and yep. with some of the, my offset meetings, so, uh, that was probably the highlight was the collective healing one and, and uh, a lot of the stuff with the protests this week and it took up a lot of time, a lot of phone calls and stuff. So um, on top of our regular meetings, I'll, and I'll address them after that. Okay. Any other commission? Uh, Mr. Chair. Yes. So Elevate Rapid City invited me to a supper where uh, Craig Wilkins with Air Technologies, they manufacture batteries, and Craig is their chief financial officer, and I think the purpose of that meeting was his company had looked at 20 locations across the United States. They narrowed it down to three. Rapid City was one, Wichita, Kansas, one, and, and I think there was one in Missouri. And... Uh, his uh, bio is 10 years in the battery industry as the founder and CEO of Vinzen Energy, a privately held energy storage technology company that has raised 50 million, 25 years of executive management experience. He moved, relocated from Bozeman to uh, Scottsdale. And I, he just said he really liked Rapid City. I don't know uh, where that is right now, but uh, it was... I find it interesting that Rapid City is one of the three locations. And he said he liked lakes, and I told him if he ever decides to move here that I'd <laughs> take him out fishing. Uh, Travis and I and Gary, we attended the groundbreaking for the VA community-based outpatient clinic, which would be located on Mount Rushmore Road. That was a well-attended event, even though it was scheduled for Thursday. And last minute, it was moved to Friday. And uh, it was a really good uh, presentation by all those that attended. Can I make a comment on that? Sure. I drove by and I was going to stop, but I, but I was dressed for actual dating, not just playing. <laughs> Pretending, I, I should say. <laughs> so the day before that, I attended the Elevate Rapid City luncheon where they discussed uh, housing strategies for economic development. I'm not going to go into detail on that. We all know there's a shortage of housing, and it's just another mechanism that they're they're trying to uh, raise what they call a uh, trust fund, which would be a fund that would uh, provide low uh, interest rates to developers. So that that was uh, they're they're going to have a lunch in each month, and this one here was focused on housing. And then I was invited to, we, we've discussed this a little bit, uh, it's called Love in the Name of Christ, and they want to, uh, they're looking at Hill City as a possible location to 
to do some work. So I was invited to go take a look at their facility on Omaha Street. I really like their concept because if somebody needs some furniture, they can't afford it. They can go there and they can get furniture, but they don't pay for it. They have to contribute hours of service and that hours of service would be for the better furniture that goes there and they refurbish that furniture and then that furniture is sold and I would assume that helps sustain the uh, the project so they do we have a meeting on Thursday it'll be my first meeting so those were they could do wheelchairs and different stuff too where they'll give people um, that are disabled they'll help them and it's just a really good member when we're doing the um, giving meters we we're going to do love incorporated was going to be that group because they actually give back so um no that's been an amazing group for a long time they've helped some, some of the people at the price when we we're there with different things for like i said disabled or um, elderly people that need like a rocking chair or a chair you know to sit in or whatever yeah i mean i had no idea this they existed but uh you know if somebody needs something they're they have uh kitchen utensils furniture uh linen it's uh we live in a pretty current society i i can tell you i've bought well, i shouldn't say i the wife has bought in three different pieces from there she already. bought with your money <laughs> yeah what'd you say Okay. <laughs> so the dinner that Ron went to with the battery manufacturer, that's, a, that's another uh, reason for them requesting a discretionary formula. And I um, appreciate Ron going to that. I wasn't able to uh, attend. A um, couple other things. Uh, also, following the uh, VA groundbreaking, there was a meeting with Senator Thune and several developers in the area that was put together by, I believe put together by Elevate, it was at the Elevate building anyway. And so part of that discussion was talking about repurposing some of the federal dollars that came out, for example, uh, some of the funds that dealt with to pay for the, so that there would be non-evictions and rent subsidies and so forth. And only a small portion of that those dollars were needed for that particular purpose. And there was about $400 million apparently that was provided to the state for that. And so Alan Solano mentioned that to Senator Thune that there may be a need for repurposing of some of those dollars in order to make it so that it's pliable for the actual needs rather than what, what was needed there. There was a lot of talk about the housing, the infrastructure that's needed to be provided so the developers can get to some of the properties where, they're, where they are able to develop. Uh, I did talk about the, uh, uh, you know, the Pennington County Housing Authority, uh, what your needs are at this point in time and, and some of your wish lists on that. Uh, also, the, um, there was um, a lot of developers in that room that were talking about you know, that they could do a lot more if they had infrastructure to properties, uh, if they had employees. And so one of the, one of the major housing developers here, fa single family housing developers, uh, indicated that they, they're now building about 80 to 100 houses a year. And if they could get themselves staffed up to where they would like to be, they could, they could push that up to 150 to 160. Senator Thune asked them what qualifications those people had to have, and they indicated none, that they would do all the training. And so, and I think most of the developers there were saying, you know, workforce was sorely needed, uh, which is not, nothing new that we're hearing from around the country, it's just that uh, there's a lot of a lot of places for employment if people really want to work. So, Mr. Chair, Commissioner Roskin. One of the things that they pointed out at that Elevate uh, luncheon was that right now they estimate that we're short 3,500 units. It could be a home, it could be an apartment, uh, but they're saying 3,500 right now is what we could use right now today without the impact of the B21 coming in in a year or two. That's a lot of water. So they're saying 
They're currently providing about six to 700 units a year. Uh, the need is at about 1,500. So it's a lot more need. Anything else on commission reports? Just, uh, Mr. Chairman, also, I want to touch base on that. I did go out on the 4th of July. I forgot to tell that to everyone here. We were talking about it beforehand. So I was out uh, with the um, Sheriff's Department on July 4th, Sunday night, up until probably about uh, 1230, 1245 or so. It was an interesting evening and got a, got a good view of the valley during the uh, fireworks and got to touch base with some of the, the community members out there as well as come all the way over to the west side of the of the county and seeing what they do. So it was a good educational opportunity and, and it was great to, to be out there. So. That was, it was great to be out there. That was well, like the cra craziest. I, have, I haven't been out there much, but then a fire administrator sent me a picture of one day. <laughs> I was going to get there. It could have filled from there to there that high. Oh, yeah. Number one. How much money did that cost? Number two, that's, I have to show you guys a picture. It's incredible. It's, it's I, like three, four feet deep. I have that picture. One. Yeah. Yeah. Jerome sent that to me. I, it was great getting out there. I, you didn't let me finish. <laughs> I was going to get to. Apologize. However, there was a lot of dangerous activity. You could see the way that they were, where they were they are setting off some of these fireworks, either in fields, jumping fence to set them off in some fields or right next to fields and things of that nature. I think there was a few fires that night, but nothing um, major that I remember because I don't remember us getting called to anything that's, that was that's major. That's the most incredible thing that that didn't somehow. Right. Because those boxes, like boxes and boxes, let alone mortars, if one fell on your house, it'd burn your house down. But that's the weirdest thing, if you think about it, is all the fireworks that are out there, how many fires or how many houses got on fire? Lord. No. Now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pass this picture around. This was from Saturday. Yeah. The amount of fireworks that were used Saturday at one residence, and they had that amount ready to go in the garage for Sunday. Yep. That was just one residence. <laughs> In the valley, oh, wow. just to give you a perspective. I mean, there was if you there, if you can get a good spot to sit in the valley up, you can see a great show out there. But again, it's it's a matter of you know that doing it safely is, is the big issue out there. Have so to, have to ask yourself if they can't afford their property taxes, but they <laughs> want to buy that stuff, then we should ask them. Um, okay, yeah. I'll just say. <laughs> I watched from my deck. I, from the view from my house, I can see uh, Ellsworth. Then you look over the ridge, just on the other side of the ridge, you can see where Rapid Valley is. And I, I, I've never seen that much fireworks. <laughs> Go, you know, that ridge is probably, I don't know how long it is, mile long, but it just looked like a constant big show. <laughs> I, I was had never seen that in all the years. Well, to put that perspective at the lake, I never heard so much as a one of those old snappy things. It was no sparklers. It was just really peaceful. <laughs> but I also want to say, you know, one of the things that they were stressing that with Sunday with that, with that happened, that so many of our police officers were tied up with the protests and stuff. They weren't able to go out and do the proper patrolling that they they normally do. So... I, that I can contribute that to part of why we're seeing some of that. Committee reports. All right. I didn't go to the community health center meeting because I had a conflicting meeting, but Lloyd was there, so I'll let him talk about that one. And I did participate last week in that social, uh, the SJC summer meeting. And um, that was a pretty interesting meeting. I had uh, never been in one of those. It was all teleconference. Uh, I didn't watch the same track that um, Mark Vargo watched. I actually visited with him afterwards just to kind of get a, an idea because there were several different tracks. And the, the tracks that I watched, I, I did have some concern. And after talking to uh, Mark Vargo, he said, yeah, I, I have some concerns with some of the individuals as well and, and some of their statements. But uh, pay attention to these. These are what we're working with. And the one with the... Um, uh, the chief of police actually was really good. Uh, they weren't necessarily talking on the uh, the woke side of things. They were actually talking about practical uh, issues in the community about, you know, we can build jails and we can jail everybody for committing crime, but that's not going to fix the issue. And jail should be there for the violent offenders, and then we should figure out ways to handle the ones that aren't violent offenders um, and then move forward. So that's what I kind of got out of that. Uh, our chief uh, 
from Rapid City was there. Chief Hedrick, he was on there discussing from, from Rapid City's point of view and things of that nature. So um, it was all in all informative, but, you know, there were some things that I had some issues or concerns about. So outside of that, um, that's about all I did other than, you know, my 4th of July and stuff this week, this last week. Commissioner LaCroix. You attended the community health or the health care trust board too, didn't you? We had another meeting on that one? Yeah, we did. That's why I'm asking you. <laughs> oh, maybe we... <laughs> I'm trying to remember, did we have one yeah, in the last did. two weeks? It, it was a while ago, but I think we requested some more information back from oh, the man. insurance companies and had some, we had the discussions over uh, the shortage of the funds and so forth. So oh, yes, I think yes. we're waiting for some more information. So I can't really pass on much more. You're right. We did do that. We but did. you're right. It was like earlier on. I think it was like Thursday. This is our five-week month or something like that. So that we kind of got lost in that. Um, as far so we're just waiting on some more information with the health care trust board. Probably you may need to get these to a notepad that they can take notes on. Oh. Yeah. Really? I really need it. I do. Um, I'm not ashamed. <laughs> Uh, Are you going through the chain? Community, community <laughs> health center. Community health board, you know, uh, health did pretty good. They just pretty much went over their basics. I think the majority of that meeting was over um, what's, what's the insurance that they've been talking about. God, I can't remember shit. Sorry. <laughs> he just um, said it a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Um, Don't watch this video. Medicaid. Medicaid. Oh, Medicaid. Medicaid. Okay. So, yes, it was, the, we had a presentation from a committee in South Dakota that want Medicaid ex expansion. And so she gave a presentation which took about 45 minutes, oh, yes. took up pretty much the whole meeting. And so that that's what that was all about. Uh, community health was asked if they could help out because they, they, their thoughts on their process is that if Medicaid was expanded, they would be able to benefit more or serve more from it. So that was that meeting. Um, SJC's summer meeting, that is, our meeting is the 13th of next week, and I'll be gone. That's our uh, MacArthur Safety Justice Challenge done, so that's on my list, but I haven't attended it yet. Okay. I apologize for my language. If you attended it, you might have been forgotten. <laughs> <laughs> that it? That's it. Okay. So I'm going to let Ron talk about the MPO Executive Policy Committee because I wasn't there. The uh, Missouri River water uh, issue, uh, we've had at least, uh, I've attended at least three meetings on that. Uh, that's moving forward uh, right now in a position where they're trying to create a uh, nonprofit with the Board of Directors. And I think that will be established uh, fairly soon. And that will allow for basically entities to indicate interest uh, of being initially a part of it. And uh, just like all other major projects, it's uh, easier to get in at the beginning. And then if you decide you don't need to be a part of it, a few years down the road, you can get out. But you may not be able to get in if you don't get in to start with. So, so we're trying to encourage everybody that uh, thinks they have any kind of a need uh, to be a part of it to begin with. So um, really that's that's about all I had because the uh, Black Hills Council local government, Ron and I was at that meeting. Uh, we took care of normal business on that. Everything is going well with that. I think that the uh, Black Hills uh, Council is, uh, is, is busy with projects from uh, any number of entities. And then the uh, um, Planning Commission, which is listed on mine, uh, we just dealt with all those issues uh, that we had at the Planning Commission. So that's all I have. Commissioner Roskin. Well, I wish I could report on the MPO, but I think I missed that one. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was just looking at that. Either that or I just totally forgot. But uh, the Black Hills Council Local Governments, uh, 
We did have a really good presentation by the South Dakota DOT uh, going out through the four years on their big projects. And in my neck of the woods, uh, Sheridan Lake Road, or not Sheridan Lake Road, but from Sheridan Lake to the Lawrence County border, there will be numerous projects that uh, will widen that stretch of 385 uh, going along Pactola Lake. And it's probably going to take two or three years in different segments. But the interesting part is that that stretch that goes along Sheridan Lake, they, I don't know when that's going to happen. It's going to be in 2023. I don't know what time of the year, but they're going to they're going to shut that down. So shutting down 385, that's going to be pretty interesting. Uh, and uh, that's so your one district, of the isn't it? What's that? That's your district, isn't it? Right. And I can't remember who the gentleman was, but. Uh, Todd Seaman was there. Rich Zacker from he's uh, he runs the Southern Hills DOT. Mm -hmm. They're gonna keep me apprised so that I can try to keep uh, folks that live in my district uh, heads up when some of these big projects are. So I think part be, of part of three eighty five is gonna be closed down for two years, right? Uh, I mean, for the, it may be reopened for winter time or something, but it's right. It's gonna be be o projects over a course of two years. It's gonna now. be interesting. Yeah. Crazy. Uh, I'm going to be using Sheridan Lake Road. <laughs> yeah. Uh, another good topic that they talked about, some of the communities talked about how they're going to handle medical marijuana. I found it interesting that the city of Spearfish, are just going to, they're going to make it municipal. They're not going to let it uh, go public. They're going to run it themselves or have at least control of it. So similar to a city having their own uh, bar and whatnot. So. And then a friend of mine that lives in Denver, Colorado, I talked to him a couple of days ago, and his son's on the task force for Arapahoe County. And I mentioned our county going down there to Adams County, and he said, you know what? He said that would be a really good re representation of uh, Pennington County. So I'm interested to see how that uh, goes when, when our folks go down to Adams County. Pennington County Housing, re or Pennington County uh, Aging, Council of Aging, um, I caught the last 10 minutes of that meeting because we had a, we ran long on a budget meeting, but uh, they're moving along, making sure that people have meals, making sure that there's good transportation for seniors, and that's kind of what our mission's all about. The building committee, uh, I think what we're in the process of doing is looking at the bylaws and priorities and making the meetings that we have uh, more per more productive and effective and and that's a or that's a work in progress i might say housing and redevelopment this is this is really getting exciting i really like that uh, being part of that organization with me and deb we know we got a lot of good land one of our lots is adjacent to the love building uh back there and so that we're looking at two potential sites that we can build somewhere, and we've talked about this, 35 unit or 65 unit. If we, if we can get the county to participate, then that 65 unit would be very doable. We have roughly $2 million available in our account. And that land, uh, you know, that's where we have the advantage. A lot of these developers, they have to go in there. They got to buy the land. Uh, we have a advantage because we do it ourselves. We don't pay a developer 6% like you would Lloyd Properties. Lloyd Properties will take 6% of the total de development cost. And I, I figured on a 65 unit, that equates to four or five units that we would net. So uh, I'm really anxious to see this uh, move forward. And and uh, it's gonna, we would be looking to assist in total family incomes, I think no more than four, with a total gross income between twenty and sixty thousand, you say, "Well, sixty thousand—that's a—that's a pretty hefty income." Well, it really isn't. To you know, that's your firefighter. Uh, a lot of these folks—that's what they make, and they need and they need assistance with uh, living. So, under that program, their rent would be based on thirty percent of their income. Medium. Can I make a plug in? Sure. Your, I I didn't know you guys had had land down there by Vicky Powers. Uh, well, no, Swim Center, you just oh, said loving. Yeah. You know, that was some affordable housing way back when, when they did away from the trailer courts and so forth. So I, I just put a plug in for that area being that close to, to the Swim Center and recreational for people and closer to shopping than 
Vicky Powers is a good place too, but that's a little bit further away from a lot of that shopping. Just just saying. I didn't know you guys had property down by there. And and we got more, but those are the two that I think would be uh, that would best serve the general public at this point in time. And the uh, I, we did the first uh, advisory road committee, and, I, and that's where we're starting to focus on uh, areas that are going to going to see some major development in the future. And although the Hill City Keystone Road seeing some stuff, not to the degree that you're out there on Anderson Road out in that area, where you're going to see four, five hundred homes. So uh, it was our first meeting. We're just uh, kind of setting basis how we're going to do things in the future, but we're we're going to try to address those areas where you're going to see a higher density. So then Joe's Joe's a good person to have on that committee because he's with the highway department. He knows what we're going to need for roads, and then and we then we have to address water, sewer, and, and drainage. But that's kind of the what we talked about on that first meeting, and that's all I got relative to committee reports. Yeah, building committee working on the bylaws with Holly. Um, we've changed a few things. I don't know if I'm full agreement with the changes on the committee yet at this point. Um, I think less is better. Um, everybody still gets to submit their programs and the things they want to do. Um, sometimes it becomes more of a conflict when um, people are involved in the committee as well as making decisions on some of that um, that's on there. It needs to be um, cut down to the point where um, all the stuff that you're on there just seems to be reiterated and reiterated. It needs to be done differently and more a process in which they just do more of the bigger projects and not all the stuff that departments and his, Mike's department can take care of without a decision made by a committee. Um, it just seems like we're doing a lot of piddly stuff in there um, that I think I Mike wanted to kind of to show people, I think, and in general, what Buildings and Grounds did, and it ended up being so they were voting on a bunch of stuff that probably wasn't for a committee. So long story short, Holly um, did an amazing job with Jay at working at some of those bylaws and figuring it out. The only thing I think we have left is who's on the committee. So it's all good. Thank you, Holly, for all your work, and Jay as well for making sure we are you know, following process and there is rules and regulations, believe it or not, on a cumulative building and some of the um, accounts. So Holly had worked with uh, Cindy and others, but again, I'm going to give Holly the credit for most of this work. Uh, she does amazing stuff for us at looking up things. So we are doing it right for not only my committee, but I think others. Um, we didn't pass board. Basically, you already know uh, Mark DeSanto's in there and he sprays a lot of weeds and he's figuring out plants and different things. So it's pretty cool. And then we have a couple other guys that one's a rancher and one's a, another retired one. And um, Scott Guffey is pretty amazing at what he does for rangeland management and weed and pest control. And just a guy that works with everybody and gets grants and uh, a very frugal guy. Um, how he does his budget and um, has a bunch of hardworking people. Um, also, I went to the range and management basic camp and uh, lasted two days. Uh, the third day was just more of a reiteration of the other two days. Um, they talked about e-soils, different soils. Plants were pretty, pretty cool to learn. The soils were, even for the soil conservationists and people, they were like, okay, this is a lot of reiteration and then people that like me that really didn't know about their terminology were getting a little bit confused but I just said it's dark light and <laughs> different types of stools if they would have explained it a little bit different um, for us that didn't know as much about e-soils and levels of soils um, it would have been a little more interesting on soils but the plants were amazing to learn about um, you would think a piece of grass is a piece of grass, but there's like freaking tons of different grasses and forbs, they kept calling them. And um, the people were very cool. And um, Scott Guffey is well respected in that um, range of people from um, 
peer, the state people, all the way to the uh, forest, uh, forest service people. He just works very well as a team player for everybody and knows a lot and does a lot for each of those entities as well. They, they, they used to not work as a team as well, and now they are all coming together to um, figure out, you know, what we should do with the Black Hills and different areas for rangeland. Um, what else do I have? Anything else? That's about it. That's it. <laughs> one, one other item. Uh, I know that Ron and I both received emails from uh, – people up in the Rockerville area relative to the traffic out there, the concerns that they have. And, and they had sent an email on to Mike Carlson with the state on that. And Mike has now responded and said they're, they're, they've heard the concerns and they're looking into it and they'll keep us informed as to what's going on out there. So What's up with the traffic? Yeah. Well, it's just a, kind of a little bit of a bottleneck. They're turning off onto those roads and See, you know, one of it's the, nothing new from what they've told us before when when they was talking about that Eisenbraun development, how much more this would cause as far as traffic problems and so know. forth. And not all those, I mean, it's not necessarily 90 degree turns that you turn on when you're turning off those roads. Uh, and so it's a lot sharper turns than that, which requires the traffic to slow down a lot more. So. Those are being looked at. One of the things that changed in the last few months is when Pat Hall started doing development in Rockerville. He had a private road that would go from that uh, Rockerville road right, basically right across from the turnoff to Pine Haven. Well, that's no longer there now. So those folks have to go on. Uh, people are traveling. The speed limit 65. Uh, some people are traveling 75 and 80, and when you get on there, you, by the time, you have to literally go across two lanes of traffic if you're going to go to that Pine Haven. you got to do it like in a block and a half or two blocks. It's I, I would say it's pretty darn dangerous. Not, I'd say vacated. I'm out there about every weekend anymore. <laughs> the road. Since, since it, I have to admit, and just last weekend, I, I went to uh, the gaslight and sat there for out front for about 45 minutes and just seeing some of the traffic coming in, coming and going. Some people are lost, but, you know, are just exploring where what Rockville is. But you're right with the traffic. And, and one of the suggested changes uh, relative to when you get down to the Reptile Gardens, you turn off in that neck yoke, you're going to be able to pull in, but you're not going to be able to pull off. You're going to have to you're going to have to, it's just going to be a whole different setup. It's going to be a little more inconvenient for people, but you're going to have to drive down and do U-turns. I want to bring up, I'm glad you brought that up because some of the problems that I've seen and experienced as, as I'm coming down 16, now that the candy store is getting extreme business, I mean, compared to what it was before, you know, I've seen some really close calls to where people are slowing down to make that turn and the people coming down the hill, we almost need to probably look at a turning lane. Remember we, uh, when we were doing the mining up there, the mining issue that was on 16 with Curl? Really good. When you looked at the accidents that were happening, remember, because they were doing the traffic counts and all that other stuff, that intersection on a Highway 16 is the worst ever. So they switched it. Remember they used to have like different lanes and different things on there. Didn't matter. They still they're still having a lot of accidents right in the uh, middle I there. Well, I think that's got at least a turning lane now. This is just people aren't accustomed. No, you're right. But when they come down, Lloyd, even when you're turning, you ever try turning? Yeah. You're going fast, and then you're you're hitting that. You can't. I don't know if you need to say where you need to turn there or something so people can see it because people are still. It's almost like you almost have to get hit trying to turn. Now I need a motion to pay the bills. So moved. Second. Got a motion and a second to pay the vouchers in the amount of $444,016.92. Oh. Any discussion? No. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. I need a motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Motion, is there a second and a second? All in favor to adjourn, indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried.
We're done.